All right, good morning. It is a Monday edition of Glenn Clark Radio. I'm Glenn. He's Griffin. Coming up on the program today, Jonathan Mayo was at the spring breakout game for the Orioles and Pirates last week. We'll chat with him about what he saw from Jackson Holiday, amongst others. Stan the fan wrapping up his time in Sarasota. We'll check in with him as well, talk some Orioles. Jeff Ehrman, InsideMDSports.com. What, what, where do we go from here? What's next for Maryland basketball? We'll talk to him about that. And it's Monday, so we'll check in with Jeremy Kahn as well. All of that coming up on the program today. Today's show brought to you by Atman's Deli. Boy, was I happy to have a little bangers and mash in my life and the, the feast that we were provided by Atman's Deli. I believe we uh, still save some of the pickles, so that'll be a little treat for me later today. Happy about that. I was actually back in here. I had to print some stuff out on Saturday. It's a weird, this is a straight shoot. I have a printer at home. It doesn't let me print in the margins. I don't know how to explain it. It's very weird. It refuses to allow me to print in the margins. Okay. So sometimes I have to print things here because I need to fill. It's this crazy idea I have of like, Using one day, one day we're gonna space. get the, we're gonna get to the bottom of the margin thing. Like we're gonna get to the bottom of this one day. Who the hell's idea was it for there to be margins? What 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 are we doing here? You just got trees you want to donate? Why do we need them? Why? No one has an answer. It, it might be that there was some sensical part of it, like you know, a, a million years ago. You need somewhere to, to you know, for a, a professor to, to jot a note on a paper. You can find it. You can find it. Get a post-it note. Margins be damned in in paper. In business, you know, we got it's a kind of different conversation. Still a fan of margarine, just not margins. It's two different thoughts as well here. Moral of the story, I had to come by here, and then I was like, <gasps> That is pickle here. <sighs> Made my day so much better. If you didn't make it down to Atman's, uh, the new Atman's this weekend, look, we love all of the Atman's, of course, but we particularly love the new one in Harbor Point. And as you're starting to make plans, baseball season just over a week away from getting started, I would go out of your way to find some time to swing by the brand new Atmans, either before or after a game this season. Check out what you've been missing. You've got that classic New York deli experience, of course, with the corned beef piled high, the hand-rolled bagels. But this Atmans location also has a full bar. Go to Atmans Harbor Point. You can find daily specials right now at atmansdeli.com. There's not much to say locally from the weekend. Nobody really did. I mean, Kyle Stowers hit three home runs in a spring training game. That's crazy. Does it mean anything? No, but oh well. Again, like he'll be a it, great player. It don't hurt. That's what I always say to people. It certainly doesn't hurt. We continue to await uh, decisions from the Orioles. They don't have to make any of those for easily over a week. So we just need everybody to stay healthy. Starters trying to work or starting to work a little bit deeper into games as we get ready for opening day. Starting to smell like baseball. By the way, absolutely nothing going on in the world today. No college basketball, no nothing. So, of course, the Orioles are off. Of course, the Orioles are off. They're on TV every other day this week. Oh. Seems nice, yeah. except for Thursday. Like, we, are all, we all got plans. We all have plans on Thursday. What's Thursday? I don't know if you've heard. I know that we're not involved in, mm. in locally, but the men's basketball tournament gets underway. Um, so that would have been nice. Maybe if you play on Monday and then maybe take like Thursday off because somebody's got something else to watch, but it is what it is. Orioles off tonight on the local front. Um, a bummer actually, the Towson women were battling with Rexall yeah, on was. Saturday, had a real chance, but they end up getting nipped right at the end, losing by one point and missing out on a chance to play for a CAA title. Seems like it's something these Towson basketball teams have in yeah, common. They just like losing in the don't, semifinals. Don't love that. The Maryland women are in, as we knew they would be. Although the 
selection show made it drag out for a little while. Just kept waiting and waiting and waiting. But they are a 10 seed. Um, and, you know, obviously happy for that team. And we talked about it when Brenda Fries was on last week. It was not a given that the Maryland women were going to be in going into the Big Ten tournament. And they got the job done by beating Ohio State. And they clinched their bid. They play Friday night 730 against Iowa State in the first round of the women's to- oh, hello, the women's tournament. The NC State basketball story was crazy over the weekend, obviously. They win the ACC by winning five games in five days. You're DJ Burns. My guy. Told you. That's my dude. Go DJ. That's my DJ. Go DJ. I mean, I don't actually care anymore about NC State. I just needed them to. Now, now I'm a Vermont man. Like, that's. I have one rooting interest during this NCAA tournament, and that's the problem. Is that that team can only lose once. That's the real shame of it. They can win it all. It's the saddest day of my year when Duke loses. Because then they can't lose again. It's, I don't know what else I have to look forward to at that point. A couple years ago, I worried that it would be over after Mike Krzyzewski retired. Nope, they'd still Duke. They're still just as insufferable as they always were. Sure, it's not quite the same because John Shire's never done anything. But, like... It still gives me joy because it's something that we can rally around as a country. We all become we're, we are all catamounts today and for this week. And then after that we'll all be something else. If we must. Non zero chance Vermont wins that game. This is not as good as some of the Vermont teams over the years, the famous Vermont team that beat Syracuse in the NCAA tournament all those years ago with um what was that guy's name? Coppen Coppenrath. Was that his, that name, his name from Vermont? T.J. Coppenrath, I want to say. Look that up. When Vermont beat Syracuse, I want to say it was Coppenrath was the name of the kid that killed him. That was a big deal. This isn't quite that good of a Vermont team, but still non-zero. And Duke's, meh. Jeez, that was 2005? Was it really 2005? Jesus. Unless two separate occasions that Vermont beat Syracuse. I don't believe they beat yeah. them twice, no. I mean, I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've forgotten things. Mopa, no. Mopa? Nope. Not the guy I'm thinking of. Not the guy I'm thinking of. Hang on. Vermont. Uh, Coppenrath. Something oh, yeah, like I mean, that. What, it was like a home game. This, they played in Worcester. This was like a home game for... Taylor Coppenrath was his name. Ah. And he was on that team. And I'm um, not sure why you didn't come up with him. But other than that... Uh, well, he because it. he wasn't the leading scorer. So that was the, fir- the first name I saw was Mappa. Mm, well, who cares? All right. Now... All that being said, the important part of today, the thing that I need to get you out of today. Yes, in the men's basketball tournament, there are no local rooting interests. But they're still going to play it anyway, and we're all still going to watch. So step one, make your plans to come join us Thursday afternoon. We're going to do the show a little bit earlier on Thursday, and we will be at Sports and Social at noon, in time for tip-off. What's the first game of the day on Thursday? 12-15, 12, 15, I know, but who is it? it? Is it's uh, Michigan uh, State, Mississippi State. Ooh. The, the Miss States. Sure. I don't know who we're rooting for there. I know we sh- we're supposed to hate the Mi- Michigan State. I don't, I've never yeah. hated Michigan State. The, like, it's almost like I want them to lose when Maryland plays them. Is but. it wrong to be like I kind of want to see the Big Ten do well, so yeah, it makes Maryland look that doesn't, somewhat that, no, that doesn't do anything more honorable. Me, <laughs> that doesn't do a thing. Honorable. <laughs> they were the 339th three point shooting team in the country. There's nothing that can make that seem honorable. Well, they weren't. They weren't 330th in everything else. They were. Their offensive efficiency was like 260th or something yeah, that's like that. A lot that. better. Great point, Griffin. Exponentially better. Great point. I can't pretend. We need to come up with betting interests in those games. We need to work on that this week. All right. But I can't pretend like I have a rooting interest. So our our games that we'll be watching uh, from 12 to 4 include yeah, Michigan State, Mississippi State, Duquesne, BYU. Oh. Is, Over. Yeah? Yeah. All right. You can BYU. They'll they'll shoot probably seventy three. But it's always game. weird in these neutral site, you know. Where third, are they? Uh, I don't know where they play. How would I know that? Okay. And and the problem is like know. you're inclined to want to root for Duquesne because right like what when region does, is that? Uh, they're in the east region. They are in things. Omaha. Omaha, somewhere in the middle of America. 
Get in the heart of the matter. It's the heart that matters most. Um, I, I, I don't have a rooting interest in that game. God, we we got we got these are not games that I have hard. All right, I'm an Akron man. I'm an Akron man. That's what it playing? is. Akron plays Creighton at 1:30. Mm. I'm an Akron man. I'm a zip. Okay. Zippity well, doo dah. Zippity a. Is wait, are they not in I, Omaha? I don't think they're allowed to play in Omaha. No, they can't be in Omaha because there's a game going on at the same time in Omaha. They're definitely not allowed to uh, play in Omaha because they're the host of the Omaha region. They so. are in. They're in Pittsburgh. They're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Duquesne. Yeah, Duquesne. 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 Duquesne's well. going to. <laughs> yeah, so. um, it's it's a it's a very weird tournament. Yeah, I'm a zip. My uh my father was born in Akron. Really? Straight straight shoot. Oh. Now he moved here when he was very young, but he was born in Akron and he had some family that lived in Akron. And I remember when I was a little kid, he he took me to visit the Akron football stadium, which at the time was called the Rubber Bowl. And I, I don't know why, but it gave me great joy. I love the fact that the place was called the Rubber Boy Bowl. It sounded very silly to me. They also do the All American Soapbox Derby in Akron, Ohio. I bet you didn't know that. I had no clue. But the only thing you knew about Akron was some basketball player I had came had a dodgeball there. tournament there one year. Did you? So, yeah. Look at that. Well, that at Akron? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. I'm going to be a zip for the day on Thursday. Let's go zips. It's not really something that other people can embrace, but whatever. Who cares about you? This is about me. Yeah. I all you know, Driving through Ohio just always depresses me. Yeah. The final game of our window is Long Beach State, Arizona. Okay. You want to get behind? You want to be go a, beach. You want to go? What are they? The Gauchos? Is that what they? No, are? that is uh, Santa Barbara. I believe what's they're Long the Forty Niners. Oh, that's lame. It is, but everyone calls them beach, so that's more fun. All right, say go beach. Let's go beach. That's what Did Ken, you see the story that's what with Ken him? would say during Barbie. They fired their coach. Oh, Dan Munson. Yes. Right, Dan Munson got fired last week, and then, and then making the lose. NCAA tournament. <laughs> that's wild. All right, we can get behind. Uh, we'll be zips and beach. Yeah. What if? What if Barbie? What if there's beach? Well, there's going to be beach on Thursday while we're hanging out at Sports and Social inside Live Casino in Hotel Maryland. We'll have beach. Do we beach. come? Dr- should we dress for the beach? We could. Should we do that? Yeah. We I went one year. They hired me to watch the Masters there, and I really? came dressed as a Masters, like a, dre- a greenskeeper. No, a caddy. That's what I was dressed. I was dressed as a caddy. <laughs> they almost didn't let me in. The guy didn't understand. <laughs> the, the security. Like, I don't approve this. The bit, security guy was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm. I'm working, and like I was trying to let him know I I was working there, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about this," and I was like, "Well, even if I wasn't, if I was just coming here, am I not allowed to wear a, a caddy outfit to to play cards?" And like, you can't sit at the, you know, like he was like, "All right, fine, go ahead." <laughs> and I'm like, "This is weird." The slot machine just wearing that. Very weird. Anyway, join us Thursday. We'll be there from noon to four. We got great giveaways, live casino swag. Um, uh, sports and social swag, and we're going to have some baseball tickets to give away, some gift cards to give away. We're going to have a lot of giveaways during that 12-4 to 4 window on Thursday. And on top of, as if that wasn't enough, we, we just, everything we do for you, we do so much. As if that wasn't enough, they have incredible food and drink specials going on. Um, you can do for a uh, hundred dollars total a giant domestic beer tower. <laughs> so start with that. Plus, 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 twenty four wings. Oh my god! Plus nachos for the table. So just go ahead and order it now. Get ready. Come hang out. Got the great reclining chairs. Awesome atmosphere. There's no. I mean, there is nowhere better to watch big events. Then it's sports and social on the giant media screen. They've got they'll have all the games going on at the same time. Obviously, we'll start with the Michigan State Mississippi State game, and then we'll go from there. Let's go beach. What if there's beach Thursday? Hang with us, sports and social. And as you know, we're doing a bracket contest. And if you don't know, then shame on you. And if you haven't paid, even greater shame. All right, I'll pay. Yeah, get in on that. What cool. about the the, the Shawns? Did they yeah, pay? Yeah, they'll pay or whoever they, they are. Yeah, they they're paying me, and so I have to forward everything. Yeah. What's their names? Uh, PFF Sean and then yeah. Sean. Sean and Sean. Yeah. They spell them the same way, or yeah, uh, they, they do, don't they? Well, the PFF they Sean's no. They right, don't. Never mind. Never them. mind. I take it all back. I regret it immediately. <laughs> We're doing a bracket contest. A few of you got in over the weekend, but only a few of you, and we want to fill this thing up. I want to donate at least 300 bucks to show your soft side. 
That means 30 of you for sure have to get in. I'll let it go up to 50. I'd love it. That'd be amazing if we donated 500 bucks. And we only, of course, have like three days to fill this thing. So I, I'm not not messing around on this one. I'm going to start calling you out by name. I'm going to start ringing necks. That's the way it's going to have to work. Andrew Stecka, let's go. All right? That's just the first name. I'm, I'm going to call out all the names. That's just the first one that came to mind. So get in on it. At Glenn Dash Clark on Venmo. Glenn Clark 180 on PayPal. Glenn Clark Radio on Cash App. $20. Send it. Half of it is going to the winner. Half of it is going to show your soft side an amazing animal charity. Then I'll give you the link. You get signed up. Winner take all of the winnings, not all of the money. The, you know, Half the pot's going to the charity. All of the winnings go to the winner. We're not doing second place. We're not doing any of that. Making it very easy. One person will be a tiebreaker, points in the championship game. You get the winnings. The other half, show your soft side. I need you to get in now. I'm going to annoy you between now and Thursday. It's frankly going to piss you off. I'm going to get shadow banned on all the social platforms. Again? I feel like I already have that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. So I need you to get in so I don't have to be this desperate. 20 bucks. Glenn Dash Clark on Venmo. Glenn Clark 180 on PayPal. Glenn Clark Radio on Cash App. If there's something else you use like Zelle, I think we can figure it out. I have Zelle, so you can use. I know I've got uh, Zelle. Yeah. I'll, just, I, I'll tell you a story about that another time. Zelle's Zelle wrong to you in some way? No, it was a, I was dealing with someone. It's. <laughs> I don't want to tell it on the air because I'll, I'll tell it some other. There was an older person. When we're it was, older. It's a whole, yeah. I'll tell you, son, I'll tell you when you're older. Anyway, um, yeah, get in, help us fill this bracket contest. I get it. It's not like years where there's local interests. I, I understand. I really do. In fact, I thought about maybe we do a women's bracket contest this year. Mm. It's just too much for me. Too much. Too much. You want to do a side bet on a women's bracket contest? We'll talk about it. Right now, I need to fill the one we're doing. So the other one's going to have to... Stay to the side. Um, you ask me who I've got a feel for winning the tournament? No idea. You got no it. clue. Yeah, sure. They won last year. I hear they're Houston's good. pretty good too. Houston's they got, good. They got an easy. Uh, they got an easy bracket here, in my opinion. It's so difficult after like last year, where like we were convinced they were really good teams, and then they all just fell apart really quickly. I mean, they're gonna get A and M or Nebraska in the second round. Like, that's I don't know. Nebraska. Nebraska can score. Yeah, Nebraska's man. fun, but I mean, Houston scored. Houston stopped everyone. So I hear ya. I, I don't think it's. Uh, this is also the eternal like. Do we even know who's they're gonna good? get JMU in the Sweet Sixteen? Like this. Oh yeah, you're you're going all you're riding with the Madison beating the w Wisconsin yeah. in the first round. Yeah, Wisconsin's reaction when. <laughs> I mean, Madison's good. It. Madison's good. Obviously, like, right. they had some really good wins at the beginning oh, of the year. Boise was very upset when they there was a when when their their reaction when they had to go to the play in. I mean, you're in, dude. Like you're in. Maybe settle down. You're, a date. you're in. You're in. And um, I, I don't really, by the way, a lot of hubbub about who got in, who Indiana got in. Indiana State should have been in. I, I Texas think, a seven? I think, all right, you, you're way too worked up about this. Um, I, I think we all would have preferred, we think we all would have preferred Indiana State to be in because they were fun and we all like those stories and that's what we want from March Madness. Do I know definitively that Indiana State was better than Virginia? <laughs> No one does. No one has a clue. And that's kind of part of the problem here. It's just hard for me to feel bad for any of the teams that get left out because, like, you know, you didn't win all your games. Indiana State could have won it all. I don't think so, no. Mm. I don't think mm. so. I don't think so. Pretty good. Um, uh, This is the, – the danger here is that this is what the NCAA uses to try to expand the tournament, and I – hate that this was also an odd year in which there were a good number of bid thieves i brought up nc state a minute ago 
UAB. That made it more difficult. It shrank the bubble. It's what it is. You're a St. John's fan. You're mad. Be mad. But this is the way it works. And I don't know what to tell you. Win more games. Then you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to have any trepidation. It is not a sham that there is an NCAA tournament without St. John's. It's not. But I certainly understand your disappointment. Patrick Stevens will join us tomorrow. He picked all 68 teams correctly that were making the field. So he certainly knew exactly what it was that the committee was looking for. Whether you agree, that that is the the people that say the committee got it wrong. Well, yeah. you, you might dislike the the methods by which they pick teams. And Patrick would probably point out some things about seeding that don't make complete sense. You might not like the methods or the criteria that they use or think the criteria is wrong, but they did, for the most part, in picking teams, go based on the criteria they told you that mattered. Now, whether that should be a lot of conversation about it's not a good thing for basketball to use the metrics that measure, you know, what the final result of games ends up being because you don't want teams continuing to try to pound teams by 50 points. We can have those conversations. That's fine. But just miss me with it some sort of travesty that Seton Hall's not in the NCAA tournament. Bummer for them, obviously. But stop it with that. Get in the bracket contest. Uh, that's the important part. We are raising money for a Show Your Soft Side amazing animal charity, so get in our bracket contest today. Now, the March Madness is not in the men's basketball tournament here in this area, but there was, um, you know, we're enjoying the start of baseball season and very fun event last week for Major League Baseball, the spring breakout series, which included an Orioles-Pirates matchup that we were allowed to watch, which was really nice because we haven't been allowed to watch much of what's going on this spring. Joining us now, MLB.com, MLB Pipeline. He was there for the Orioles-Pirates spring breakout matchup. He is a friend, Mr. Jonathan Mayo, and he's back with us now here on GCR. Jonathan, it's Glenn in Baltimore. It's good to chat with you as always. Thank you for taking the time for us this morning. Of course, Glenn. How are you? I'm all right, man. I, you know, I love the concept of spring breakout. Obviously, you know, we're kind of transitioning in Baltimore. This would have been better for folks in Baltimore like three years ago where there was nothing to look forward to at the beginning of baseball season. So it could have been something, ah. but it's still good on both ends. I, I, I guess let me start with Jackson Holiday is now 0 for 2 against Paul Skeens, so we should just probably give up and acknowledge he's a bust, correct? I think so. Send him down at least to double A. We're going to move him down our top 100. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, that was a lot of fun. And you know what? Uh, Jackson Holiday did not get cheated. Uh, I don't think there's any shame in, in carrying the bat back to the dugout when he faced Paul Skeens. And he got his hacks in. He just didn't connect. Uh, Paul Skeens is pretty talented. And uh, that was, you know, I, I think when this idea was created, uh, that kind of matchup was, was the poster of what, spring breakout could look like no doubt no doubt and obviously there was a lot of excitement for the first one so it uh, made even more sense here I, I i jonathan the jackson holiday thing in general at this point I, I will tell you that the expectations in baltimore are that jackson holiday starts the season opening day in baltimore and immediately is a star immediately is a star for a team that they we believe has a chance to compete to go to the world series are our expectations at all out of whack? Are, are, is there danger that we're going too far, even as good as we think Jackson Holiday is? You know, I always try to err on the side of caution. Could that happen? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think that he is the kind of player that you place any limits on. Nor is he going to be worried about that 
pressure. You know, he'll be able to handle it. And if for whatever reason it doesn't go well and he's got to kind of figure it out in the big leagues or, heaven forbid, go back down to the minors, he'll hit the reset button. He's going to be just fine, even though he's just 20 years old. And uh, so I don't want to place any limitation on what he could be. Uh, You know, I think that – I think he'll more than hold his own. He can do a lot of things, even if he's not putting up huge numbers that will help the Orioles win games. So I think really the the, the variation is somewhere between a solid big leaguer with some ups and downs that a young player is going to have and, rookie, and legitimate rookie of the year candidate. Uh, and I'm going to lean more towards the legitimate rookie of the year candidate. So with Side that, Franks. with with that that part of it to me makes it like they have to have him on the big league club on opening day. Like they can't do the thing where they risk they call him up in May and he ends up winning rookie of the year and then they look like idiots because they lost the year of control and didn't get the draft pick out. Like they have to put him on the major league roster, right? It's, uh, I don't know. If there's a have to. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, think they're yeah. at a stage. I think there's a stage now where. Uh, the Orioles will take the best 26 players to help them win north with them. Do I think that should include Jackson holiday? I I don't think there's any question. Uh, Could you make an argument that he should get some time in triple a because he's spent so little time at the upper level? Absolutely. But I, I I think that they don't hesitate to have guys come up. Uh, I think in addition to, him helping them win games, which I think is the first objective. Uh, I think we're already seeing teams and their and their willingness to bring a guy with them on opening day because of that extra PPI, you know, the, the extra draft pick that they get if if the player happens to to do really well in rookie of the year voting. So I, I think all the things line up to him being the Orioles starting second baseman on opening day. He is Jonathan Mayo. He is with us here on GCR. Jonathan, what else is most exciting to you amongst the Orioles' prospects, right? Like, I feel like Samuel Desayo is getting a ton of attention at the moment, and there's there are people that believe that Samuel Desayo could be maybe at some point the next in this line that we've talked about a number. Is, is he really that good, or is that just, you know, wishful thinking from us that the Orioles continue to always have the number one prospect in baseball? <laughs> Yes, I think he could be that good. Um, you know, I don't want to skip over my nephew Kobe Mayo, but right, um, right. But you know, I'm I'm obligated. Otherwise, I can't show my face. Yeah, you know, family reunions. I understand table. that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I do think that Senya Basayo has a chance to be a truly, truly impactful hitter. Uh, you know, I I not I had not seen him in person until spring breakout. And obviously he didn't he didn't do much and he's kind of you know I don't know that he was firing in all cylinders just yet uh, but he's big he's a big kid in in, in, in the best of all possible ways uh, the the ability to hit and with power uh, is very very impressive but let's keep in mind that he doesn't turn twenty until August. Again, he may be one of these precocious hitters that you don't put a limit on, but he has played a grand total of four games above A ball. So, uh, you know, could he end up being the number one prospect in all of baseball? Sure. I think Ethan Salas of the Padres might have something to say about that. Mm-hmm. You know, but I could see him being in the conversation to being at the, you know, at the very top of, of, of that list. Absolutely. It is. What is his reality as a catcher, Jonathan? I mean, it's you know a little bit of a tough organization to try to envision him catching. Mm-hmm. Um, if he is assuming he stays with the Orioles, uh, I could envision him spending most of his time either at first base or DH, okay. and catching a couple times a week or once you know once a week, twice a week. However many days you want to get Adley Rushman off from behind the plate. Uh, you know, could he eventually be uh, a big league regular catcher? I, do, I think he can be. I don't know that he's ever going to win a gold glove, but, I mean, the arm is plus. Uh, the, the rest of it is, con- is continues to be a work in progress. 
but again, I'll point to his age and, and amount of experience, and he's gotten better. They've been very pleased with how his overall defense has progressed. So I, I think if this were a different organization, we wouldn't even talk about, like, well, where else can he play? Uh, but because of Adley Rushman, you have to start thinking about it because I'm assuming that he's going to put up some very good numbers at the upper levels so, this year. So we're looking at next year to figure out where he fits into the big league. So, so just to clarify that, if if not, you in another organization, you really do think he is a major league catcher, that he could continue to catch moving forward. He doesn't have to be moved to first base. I, I mean, everything that I've been told so far, and I, you know, well, in full disclosure, I've never seen him catch an inning. Sure, right? sure. Um, but in people that I have talked to, uh, it's pointing in a decent direction. You know, he'll always be a bat first backstop, uh, you know, even at his best. Could he approach being an average receiver? Yeah, I think so. He's not unathletic. Um, you know, the hands aren't terrible. And the, like I said, the arm is plus. Uh, you know, I think some of it depends on what direction the game goes in. You know, there's a lot less pressure on the catcher if there's an automatic balls and strike uh, system in place because then framing isn't as important. You still have to obviously be able to catch the ball uh, and block and, and work with your pitchers. But I, I think he'd be in a, you know a, a, an adequate big league receiver, the kind who you forgive whatever shortcomings there may be compared to a much better defensive receiver because of the numbers he's going to put up. On the on the other side of things, you bring up your nephew. I <laughs> am. I, he's. It's funny because we're talking about Jackson Holiday being at the big league level. Kobe Mayo has m- many more games at advanced levels in, my, in the minor leagues than Jackson Holiday does. Um, how how far is Kobe Mayo away from being a major league bat at this point? Um, I'm guessing there would be other teams where the answer would probably be he's there now. I think it, yes, in another in another organization, if he if he weren't in the conversation for the opening day roster, he certainly worked his way into it with how he hit this spring. Um, you know, I think the thing that's been impressive with him is that he uh, the hit tool is a little better. Um, I think he's always going to swing and miss some, but the approach. The plate discipline, all of that is allowing him to make more contact. And when he does, I think we've seen what he can do. Uh, and you know, over the last two years in the minors, he's you know moved up and 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 gotten to that power more and more as he's figured things out. Uh, I, you know, he'll go to AAA and wait for that first opportunity. But again, it's going to be the question of how you fit him into that lineup. Uh, you, you know, there's still uh, a glut of talent on the dirt in Baltimore mm-hmm. uh, and at the upper levels. You know, yes, they traded Joey Ortiz. That doesn't really impact, uh, you know, it doesn't impact Kobe Mayo that much, you know, other than to take away one infielder who could move Gunnar Henderson to third. I still think the best fit eventually will be first base, uh, but the Orioles will have to make a decision there too. So, it's a good problem to have, and he's 22 for the entirety of this season. So <laughs> after talking about Jackson Holiday and right. Samuel Basayo, right. that sounds yeah. ancient. <laughs> yeah, right. um, but keep in mind that uh, you know he could have been a college player who has one year of pro ball under his belt, and he'd be around like that that same age maybe. And and, and so I, I think. I think you're going to see him in Baltimore at some point this year, but it may just be based on the need and opportunity at the big league level. Uh, he, he can't necessarily force his way up to the big leagues because of the numbers he puts up. If the corresponding players at his positions in the big leagues uh, are, are also producing. All right. Let me, let me cover two things with you real quick. Always appreciate it, Jonathan Mayo. The first being um, Kyle Stowers is having an awesome spring. I, I don't, at some point, should we be reconsidering whether or not he could be a part of the, the solution still for the Orioles somehow, or is he just having a guy that's having a very good spring? Uh, I would say probably 
a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I would love to see him get a long opportunity, and I don't think that can happen in Baltimore. Right. Um, you know, it's been a great spring. I think we've all seen guys who have huge springs and hit a bunch of homers or do something impressive, and it doesn't it doesn't correlate. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say that I look to see who he's hit the homers against. Uh, and things of that nature. But spring training numbers should always be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, that said, I do think that he deserves a longer opportunity to show what he can do at the big league level during a regular season. Uh, I think for uh, a team that is, well, you know, it, it could be a team that's competing and has a hole, an injury or, or you know, needs a corner outfielder. Uh, by by all means, they should try that. I, you know, I don't know if the Orioles are that team. I think they have some other options who who are perceived to have higher ceilings, uh, you know, better chance of producing that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes guys just need a change of scenery. You get into that age, you could be 26 now. Um, you know, for all this year, that's not old, but you get to that point where you become that. There's a perception of being a quadruple A player, and uh, I do worry that Kyle Stowers is in that category. Yeah. You know, I'm perhaps unfairly, which is often the case. So he, he just needs an opportunity to go out and show that he can do it over the you know over the course of a, a full season at the big league level. It's a it's a much bigger picture thing that we're dealing with in Baltimore, which is like, is it time to either trade away some of these guys that are blocking these outfielders, or you know trade them um it's it's of course the the word is always this is a good problem to have to have this many players sure. um and the the la dodgers never seem to think it's a problem to have you know 26 28 qualified major leaguers that are helpful but you know I, it's just something we're not used to here but then let me i, I, I rap because if we bring that up the other side of it is like pitching and you know, it, as good as we felt when the Orioles made the Corbin Burns deal, obviously it was mitigated by the news about Kyle Bradish and John Means not starting the season. I, is there anyone among the Orioles pitching prospects that are not heralded that you say, I actually think there's more going on there than maybe you think there is? Is there anyone of this group that you think is a, a, a significant in any sort of way? I feel like we touched on this the last time we talked and, um, you know, I think, I, I think, you know, Chase McDermott and Cade Povich are, are, are big leaguers, but they're, they're not high ceiling guys. Um, I, I think they're, they're interesting and you need, sometimes you just need arms, right? You need that. Mm -hmm. The one guy who's probably the most interesting is Seth Johnson, just from the pure, stuff standpoint but he's thrown a grand total of 37 innings over the last two seasons so you know he needs to go out and pitch and put uh tommy john surgery really in his rearview mirror uh i think this is a big year for him because if the stuff shows up this year i know we have an eta of 2025 on him uh you know this is age 25 season so I think if he goes out and shows the stuff he had pre-injury, um, then I think he is the kind of guy who could impact uh, impact the big league staff. Now, then it's a question of how. Uh, you know, I, when all is said and done, a relief role might be best. Uh, and, and I would have thought before some of the injury bug really started hitting, you know, the, the rotation that that might've been his easiest ticket to, to help out. Now, I don't know, uh, out of necessity, the current, let's see what happens when he gets stretched out as the season goes on and, and how that stuff plays. The stuff is very, very good. We just haven't seen enough of it healthy to know for sure. Yep. No, I completely get it. And it'll be one that we'll be watching during the course of the year. Uh, of course, MLB Pipeline has updated uh, top 30s for the Baltimore Orioles. So you can check that out. Jonathan, uh, what's what, what's life look like for you? What can I be plugging for you? Uh, you know, we're just getting ready for the start of the season. I uh, you know, finished my spring breakout uh, mega journey, zigzagging across the state of, of Florida, and 
Now I'm just waiting for for that, and soon enough we'll start focusing on the draft. All right, we'll be uh, not not quite as intrigued as we have been in some years, but more picks for the Orioles early on. Always got to find players. That's Always got to find players. That's a fact. At Jonathan Mayo on Twitter is how you follow him. Jonathan, always appreciate you, man. Really enjoy our conversations. Thanks for taking the time for sure. me this morning. Anytime, Glenn. Thanks. It's Jonathan Mayo, MLB.com, MLB Pipeline, with us here on GCR. All right. Today's show is also brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and by a Toyota.com, who is a proud sponsor of County Sports Zone. And if you missed any of the action from the state high school basketball championships this weekend, you can go find the results right now at CountySports.Zone. And they immediately shift into high school lacrosse coverage, and you can play pick 'em with high school lacrosse right now. CountySports.Zone brought to you by Toyota. We come back in. What's next for Maryland basketball? Jeff Ehrman, InsideMDSports.com, joins us. It's Glenn Clark Radio. Hey, it's Jeremy Kahn. This postseason, bet in person at the Green Turtle Bet Park Sportsbooks with locations in Canton and in Towson, and enjoy the best in-class sports wagering experience at their state-of-the-art facilities, bringing an unmatched sports betting thrill. Gambling can be a fun and entertaining experience, but there are risks involved. If you're planning on betting on the game at the casino or on your phone or computer, know your limit, stay within it set a budget and a time to stop remember gambling isn't a financial solution and it doesn't mix well with alcohol or drugs know the risks and have a plan before you begin gambling for free and confidential services call 1-800-GAMBLER 24 7 or go to helpmygamblingproblem.org Discover your next favorite beer crafted in the heart of Charm City. At Guilford Hall Brewery, we believe beer should be flavorful and easy to enjoy. Our meticulously crafted lagers and ales are derived from centuries-old European brewing traditions, a staple for both the seasoned beer aficionado or a novice hophead. Experience beer styles that dare to showcase the exceptionality of simplicity. Visit our restaurant and brewery at 1611 Guilford Avenue or view our menu and tap map online at guilfordhall.com guilford hall brewery european tradition baltimore charm make the most out of every day in your toyota rav4 available in hybrid or gas only models a rav4 can get you where you want to go in style check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new rav4s from your local toyota dealer today Six chicken tenders made from fresh, never-frozen Royal Farms world-famous chicken, a family-sized order of Western fries, honey mustard dipping sauce, and a two-liter bottle of Dr. Pepper. It's Royal Farms' new Tucker's Tenders Meal. It's Justin Tucker's favorite, and at only $19.99, it'll be your favorite meal, too. The new Tucker's Tenders Meal, available only at Royal Farms. Now you can kick back, relax, and eat like a champion. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. Craving that classic New York deli experience? Look no further than the new Atman's Deli in Baltimore's Harbor Point. Corned beef piled high, hand-rolled bagels, and something different. A bar! Atman's has food and drink specials every day. Now open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in, grab takeout, or hang out at the bar for the next O's game. Atman's Deli, an authentic taste of Baltimore tradition since 1915. Find us at Harbor Point or visit atmansdeli.com. What company has the expertise to make your home healthier by purifying your air and killing all viruses, allergens, and bacteria. A.J. Michaels, heating and air conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis, ajmichaels.com. Hungry? With seven locations throughout Maryland, Glory Days Grill is always right around the corner. They have wings, burgers, salads, sandwiches, and drinks to satisfy everyone, as well as tons of televisions and sound delivered right to your phone. Glory Days is the best place to watch football or whatever your favorite sport is. While you're there, be sure to check out Goose Flights Lager, named in honor of legendary Raven Tony Goose Siragusa. Two dollars of every can is donated to the Goose Flights Foundation. Glory Days Grill. Great food, good sports. One of the things that's definitely wrong with this country is that this dude still has a job somehow, some way. Glenn Clark. Back in here on GCR, we continue to move along on a Monday edition of the program. Still to come, we'll head down to Sarasota for one more visit with Stan the Fan. Jeremy Kahn will join us as he does on every Monday. Uh, it was a thriller on Friday night. Johns Hopkins hosting Navy, and it was kind of a crazy scene where there was like a bus fire and there was a lot going on 
Game had to start late and ended up going to overtime. Navy, who was down 6-1 early, ends up beating Johns Hopkins. So huge win for the mids, obviously, who got off to another rocky start to the season, but uh, now have wins over both uh, Boston University and Johns Hopkins. So it looks like they're finding their footing. I, I don't know that there's a path to them getting, even with a Hopkins win, I don't know that there's a path to them getting and at large, I think they would have to win the Patriot League still, probably in order to get in, but that's a very big win. Uh, Maryland lost to Virginia at home. I tried to watch a bit of that game on Saturday. They just never, they never really all that consistent during the course of the game. Like, they never really, they never asserted themselves as being the better side. And, you know, given the results now against a couple of ACC teams, I think it's fair to say that Maryland's a bit behind those teams. Still a lot to be sorted out, right? It's still kind of a weird part of the year where, where Army's the number one team in the country, but nobody really thinks they're the best team in the country. It's just kind of a weird thing that's going on. Um, yeah, the news continues to get worse for Loyola as they lost to Boston University on Saturday they're going to need some sort of miraculous turnaround to have any hope. Um, interesting weekend on the uh, the local lacrosse front. And then um, Navy actually, I think, turns around and plays Villanova tomorrow, who they lost to a year ago. So um, that one's one that they've been trying to get back since that point. No local men's team in the NCAA tournament. And obviously at the top of that list, the, uh, the unbelievably disappointing season from the University of Maryland. I did write the column I told you I was going to write, which was my mea culpa. Like going into the year, I was extremely positive about the overall health and direction of the Maryland basketball program. And I could not have been more wrong. So we dive into that today at PressBoxOnline.com. Let's dive in more about what's coming up next and what this now looks like moving forward from InsideMDSports.com. He is our friend Jeff Ehrman, and he's back with us now here on GCR. Jeff, it's Glenn. It's always good to catch up with you. Thanks for taking the time for us this morning, man. Absolutely, Glenn. Good to talk to you. Yeah, um, it's not a pleasant topic, obviously. <laughs> There's yeah. no way around that. I told you you need to start posting trigger warnings. Uh, people, people have <laughs> mental health issues, Jeff. we got to deal with that. <laughs> Well, um, they've been through a long, uh, yeah. long and mentally taxing yeah. stretch of futility. Yeah. So while sometimes they are definitely extreme, you can you can see the the root of the frustration pretty easily. Yeah, Maryland wasn't good this year, but at least they were terribly unfun to watch. At least they also had <laughs> that going for them, which was nice. Um, all right, so so Jeff, let's let's start with the reality, right? The reality, you know, the the, the first one, and and for po those that don't understand it, um, not that it would have ever made sense to try to change coaches after one disappointing year. It's it's not just that that's silly. It's that it was nonsense to even spend any time, you know, uh, wasting your breath on. Kevin Willard has an extraordinary buyout, which probably means. He's it's still years that even if this were to continue to go wrong, it's still years away from a point at which Maryland could consider uh, you know getting going a different direction. Yeah, I mean, you never know these days with guys. Maybe a guy is, sees that things aren't working out well wherever he is and, as they say, beats the posse out of town and takes a job somewhere else. You never know if something Louisville or whatever popped up, hypothetically. But, yeah, it's, it's highly unlikely he's going anywhere this off season. Like you said, he's got five years left, about $20 million guaranteed uh, that Maryland would need to pay to buy him out. But, you know, I, I'd say after next year, he, he needs a bounce back next year. Like, yep. if next year is like this, you know, it might, the, the, the money part might not even be a factor because at that point, you know, you're kind of, uh, you know, you already have a lot of apathy in the fan base, apathy and or anger. And if another season like this, you know, I don't see how you necessarily would make that work. I understand. I just also don't know where the $16 million is. That's going to have to be somebody else's problem at that point. So so let's dive yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, the thing is, when people are paying those, now Maryland is not like one of these SEC schools or other that's just right. uh, going to shell out huge buyouts all the time. But, you know, you do reach a point where, um, you know, it's, it's not salvageable. Now, I'm not saying he's going to have a year like this next year again. But, you know, it was the first 
losing overall record by a full time Maryland yeah. coach in thirty years. So yeah. Nope. That's uh it is it is damning. There's no way around that. And and it again, it's in, incredibly damning considering it's not like there was some insane roster turnover or anything like that. Like this was this was the team that worked plus the pieces that you thought would fit. And, you know, we can point out that the, the shooters from the year before that were gone. But I, I think to me that's the most the most difficult part of looking at Maryland basketball right now is what happened to Deshaun Harris Smith and Jamie Kaiser this season? Because yeah. I, I everything else was kind of what you thought it was going to be that boy we talked about development an awful lot when Mark Turgeon was the coach at Maryland that part of this to me is the most as as concerning as the actual record was and it was bad that part of it is like what what is going on here how could two so highly regarded players both be such non-factors for this team well, Willard's got actually, you know, he's got a really good track record of developing players. You know, he's done that over the years. So there's a good chance he'll do that with those guys. So, you know, I don't think it's a development thing as much as the question is about scouting, right? Because, he, you know, he even admitted it after the last days, after the last regular season game is lost at Penn State where they're, you know, they, they're not allowed to win anymore yeah, in recent ever, years. Right that uh, yeah i think what six or seven in a row there it's whatever it is but anyways he uh he said he admitted that he put too much pressure on the freshmen he was expecting them to make you know an impact greater than what they could do and so you know that's the question because he was relying on those guys last year he also you know the decisions in in the transfer portal to add kind of uh complementary role players you don't know what you're going to get from them necessarily, you know, in Geronimo, Chance Stevens, and Matty Traore, when you lose Hakeem Hardy and Ian Martinez, that's a pretty bad trade if you want to look at it as a, you know, as a trade. So, you know, I think he understands he made mistakes last year. He's saying all the right things in terms of hitting the portal hard this year, but still, it's pretty hard to, to add as much talent as they need to add. That That's the part, right? Because obviously the portal opens this week. And they need a lot. Today. Yeah, okay, today. And they need a lot, and they need mm-hmm. everything. And that's with us still not knowing, like, how many of these guys are going to be gone. And I'm, you know, I'm in a weird place with, like, losing players from this year's team. Like, okay, well, they had them, and they weren't very good. So, you know, I, I don't know how much it can hurt you other than from a sheer number standpoint. I, I, I don't know. I know there's been a lot of rumblings about, like, a mass exodus on Twitter. I know you've. I don't know what you you're saying, you know, uh, uh, without it being behind a paywall at this point about certain yeah. guys, but like I, I I'm I am in a weird place, Jeff, because I I know you can't lose everybody at the same time. I don't know who you're crying over from this group that didn't work. Yeah, I think Glenn that you you know among the reserve type of guys, bench guys, guys who didn't really make a big impact. You know, you probably aren't losing a lot because uh, you can find go and find guys to replace them from lower levels, mid levels of college basketball. Um, the guys, obviously, core guys, obviously, are, are Julian Reese, who, you know, if you lose him, you don't have a single, literally a single established, productive Big Ten player returning on the roster next year if you lose him, and that's a, there's a real possibility he'll be in the portal. I actually wrote on the site. I have an article up. It's uh, not paywalled or anything about about that and the portal, but you know. And then otherwise, Kaiser and Harris Smith both struggled as freshmen, but that doesn't matter because you need some yeah. building blocks, even yeah. if you're skeptical of whether they can become stars or live up to their high school rankings. You still need guys. You know. You know. Harris Smith, he might not live up to the – he showed he'll be able to play in the Big Ten. I think he'll improve a lot. But either way, you need some, some building blocks regardless of how high their ceiling is. So that's three building blocks along with Derek Queen. And then otherwise, you basically need, you know, one of everything. Right. Right. One of everything. And he needs a hit for the cycle is what I've been, uh, what I've been saying. Um, I, I know as I, as I read the piece that's not paywalled, you do throw out a couple of names that 
seem like they would make sense? Is there any is there anything that like you're you're confident about that they are in good position to land in the portal? Not really, because it opens today officially. You know, obviously there's every everywhere in college basketball there's back channel communications going on, coaches telling other coaches this guy's gonna leave, things like that. So everyone, including Maryland, already has a list of private list of guys they think will be in there, but you know, it's really still, even with that said, it's too soon to make any big predictions except, you know, I think that they're in really good shape uh, with Rodney Rice, the former uh, Damascus star who was at Virginia Tech and left there after last year. That's a guy I would definitely keep a close eye on. So, Jeff, I I guess the, I, I come back to how did they get there at Queen with everything that's going on, right? Like, <laughs> they, and, 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 and yeah. I ask this question, and I, I think you know where I'm going to go with this, like, yeah, is there I have a, a feeling. Is there a healthier NIL thing going on here that can close the – because I can't imagine anyone looking at this program right now and saying, well, that's where I need to be. <laughs> it's, it's at the University it, yeah. of Maryland. So how did they get Derek Queen, and is there a financial support that could help them land other players to get this turned around quickly? Well, first off, that's not what I thought the question was, oh. and I thought it was going to be, uh, has he signed yet, and is there any oh, chance, is there any chance he he waivers? Because that's I, the by popular the, one right now. Yeah, by yeah. the way, yes, it's certainly still in that the back of my mind somewhere. Yeah, there. yeah, that's the popular one right now, I think, with everything going poorly and that being the one ray of sunshine to cling to. Yeah. People are really clinging to it, understandably, which, you know, I haven't heard anything about him. Uh, reconsidering or anything like that, you know. Big, I mean, NIL was a part of it, but I, but a lot of schools were offering NIL. I think he probably could have, if he if he wanted to make it a bidding war, he could have gotten more money somewhere else. So, I think it was it was home. He wanted to come home. His mom wanted him at home and really liked the coaches in Maryland. And he's got a bunch of friends on the team. On the team, him and uh, Deshaun Harris Smith yeah. are close friends. They talked very regularly during the recruitment. So, you know, even though NIL is important and a guy like that can get a lot of money you know people think people just assume every single recruitment is just all about the highest bidder but you know things being home comfort things like that still do matter and i think that was you know that was the biggest thing for them so i I, so let me let me then separate it from the other part of the question where is their nil situation in general like is as they have a lot of holes to fill in the transfer portal is is he going in with the opportunity to say hey we can help make up for some of the difference here yeah, you know, I don't I wouldn't want to speak for them in terms of their exact numbers obviously, but I would say that uh clearly it's improved a lot from last year. You know, I think from what I've heard the budget is somewhere in the range of three times what it was last year, which is good. You know, okay. they're sort of my guess again, it's really hard because none of these numbers are public, you know, so it's all anecdotal stuff, but they're probably in the top I would guess five or six in the Big Ten now in an IL budget would be my guess. Last okay. year, they were pretty low. I think Maryland kind of underestimated uh, how big of a factor or maybe how fast the evolution of NIL was going to be, and so they were caught without a lot of money, which was part of the part of the reason why the portal didn't really yield much for them, but not the whole reason. You know, they, they could have gotten some better players. But, you know, long story short, I don't think uh, – you know, I don't think you can use NIL as an excuse. You know, here and there, there's going to be a guy, if, if if you're going after the top transfers that you lose because of it. But overall, I think they have enough resources where they can get good players. You brought up Julian Reese, right? Is it fait accompli? Like, is he just gone? Or is it, hey, you know, tell me you love me a little bit more, that I'm important, and let me see that you've got something cooking here, and I'll reconsider yeah, that, Glenn, that's what I've been trying to kind of figure out with my reporting. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's fait accompli, but uh, there's a good chance he'll be in the portal. You know, I think there's a few different dynamics for him. Obviously, NIL is one of them. You know, he wants to maximize his value as any player does, especially when you're entering your final year, you know. Uh, obviously, two of his three years at Maryland have been pretty rough. He got there freshman year as coach you know resigns eight games into the season the season turns into like an exhibition you know meaningless uh death march for months they have a good year sophomore year and then this year is pretty disastrous too so 
you know, I can, it, I don't think anyone would be able to blame him for wanting a fresh start somewhere after going through all of that. But, you know, I, I would probably lean toward the possible likelihood of him leaving, but it's really hard to tell right now. He hasn't said anything. His mother hasn't said anything. So, you know, it's just, and obviously none of us are privy to whatever discussions are happening about NIL. So let's wait and see. Yeah, Griffin wants to yeah, get uh, in. Jeff, so you were talking about, you know, just Deshaun Harris-Smith, and so he played with Doug McDaniel from Michigan at PVI, right? Is mm-hmm. there is there any reason to think there might be some sort of connection there and Doug McDaniel wanting to come home to D.C. and be and play in the yeah. area? Yeah, that's a good uh, call, Griffin. They uh, actually they did play together. I'm told, you know, they're very close friends, so it would make sense. Uh, I think McDaniel will be in the portal early. I asked this local source uh, who knows him well about that. Yesterday, he didn't think that he would wait until Michigan hires a new coach to make a decision. He thinks he'll just get into the portal. I'm, I'm not 100% sure that the Maryland's interest in him is as high as a few other guys potentially, but he's definitely uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on. And then what's the what's the situation with the staff, right? Like they still have to I, – I, I know that there was a name that was floating around for Mike Jones' job. Is that is that formal yet? No, uh, there's not a formal name yet. It's been a little mysterious, actually, this time. You know, the name you're mentioning, obviously Mookie Dobbins, Baltimore guy, Team Thrill director, Derek Queen's uh, mentor, basically, has floated around. But I, I'm not sure necessarily he's the guy for that or or he'd be the guy if somebody else in the staff leaves. So, you know, I think Willard would, would name a replacement for Jones pretty soon with recruiting about to heat up, but no word on that yet. This is always the difficult part, Jeff. This, is, and I, this happens to me all the time during the show where I, like, I don't know if something that you said was paid information or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, so, I appreciate it. I like, noticed you taking care of that. I, so. I, I, but, I, I, I but, knew that was the name, but I'm like, I don't know if that's <laughs> something. that I don't want to give away something that Jeff is asking people to pay for. It makes, so uh, yeah, I'm not, it's not just you, Glenn. It makes it awkward many, many times trying to decide how much leg to show, right? Right, but, correct. Uh, I appreciate you giving the, giving the thought to that. I do like a, I like, I like a, a little bit of shoulder is what really gets me going. Yeah, it's yeah. Really, it's the shoulder that works for me. <laughs> All right. Um, well, hey, everything's great, right? Like happy, happy, fun time. Uh, um, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. What yeah, there at is least to there's say. March Madness. I know for a lot of people, uh, myself included. Obviously, it's not the same when Maryland's not in there, but it's still the best sporting event of the year, right? There is to that. Me at least. There is that. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I admit that, like, when the years where Maryland is this bad, I am not anywhere as amp because i'm just not watching as much yep. college basketball like i'm yep. i'm checked out so i don't have i don't even have as much knowledge about it going in it's the way that it goes before i let you go any do you have any early thoughts about the the quarterback competition at all or uh, nothing to know there yet it's... yeah i mean i think you have to assume mj morris is the favorite he's the big bigger name coming from nc state hard to get a get a guy like that without giving him some indication he's got a good shot to win the job. I don't think it's a done deal, though. Billy Edwards is probably his primary competition. You know, we question, as always, is about his arm strength. You know, struggled a little bit with that in the bowl game, also made some big plays, but he's, you know, very well liked and respected on the team, you know. Oh. But, and then Cam Edge is kind of the wild card, good arm, but, you know, he has not shown yet uh, his ability to like, move around in the pocket and things like that. So Morris is definitely the favorite, but it'll be interesting to watch. All right. InsideMDSports.com. As portal season becomes extraordinarily important, it would make an awful lot of sense for you to be subscribed at InsideMDSports.com to find out the latest on all of these names that will be flying around, both coming and going for the University of Maryland. At Jeff underscore Ehrman, as well as how you follow him. Jeff, always appreciate you, man. Thanks for taking the time for us. Let's talk again real soon. Thanks right. for having me on, Glenn. Thanks, Sounds buddy. great, man. Bye. Jeff Ehrman with us here on GCR. It's unpleasant. It's what it is. But it's like an extra week of free agency, right? Like we got the first week of NFL free agency. Now we get a week of college basketball free agency. It's maybe a couple of weeks. Maryland's got a lot of work to do. Our number one of today's show is in the books. 
still to come. We're headed down to Sarasota to chat with Stan the Fan. He and I might be, uh, we might be getting at each other, in fact, today. Uh-oh. I don't know if you saw. Oh. I don't know if you saw. I don't think I saw. He's got a roster prediction up and does not have Jackson Holiday on really? his roster. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. That's at PressBoxOnline.com. Um, of course, you always know it's Superbook.com, the Superbook app. That's the place to go uh, for your betting needs. Use the code Clark 23 Get up to $250 in a same-day first bet match. Um, right now, apparently there's only two hockey games tonight, and they're doing an odds boost. Will the Capitals and Sabres both win? Would be plus 350, now plus 390 for the Capitals and Sabres to both win. I do not know what these leagues are doing. Why does the NHL only have two games tonight? There's no college basketball. Seems like a good. I want to make sure all eyes are on the Caps. It's, it's like everything's. I think the U.S. national team is playing on Thursday night when yeah, the I NCAA saw that. I was tournament. Like, what what, what is are we doing going on here? to steal a line from Scott Van Pelt? There is an open evening. You can have it tonight. What are we doing? Uh, but if you like the Capitals and the Sabers, who are both dogs this evening. To both win, then you can get it at plus 390 right now with the odds boost at Superbook, Superbook.com and the Superbook app. All right, Stan and I will uh, we'll, we'll debate it. We'll hash it out. You guys will wrestle when we get back? I don't know if it will get come yeah. to that, although if it does, I like my chances. <laughs> um, look, we'll talk about it. I, I read what he wrote. I understand what he's saying. I I. I I think the PPI is too much of the the conversation, but we'll get into it. Stan will join us, and we'll discuss why he has Jackson Holiday off of his Orioles opening day roster when we come back in on GCR. Craving that classic New York deli experience? Look no further than the new Atman's Deli in Baltimore's Harbor Point. Corned beef piled high, hand-rolled bagels, and something different. A bar! Atman's has food and drink specials every day. Now open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in, grab takeout, or hang out at the bar for the next O's game. Atman's Deli, an authentic taste of Baltimore tradition since 1915. Find us at the Harbor Point or visit atmansdeli.com. Why bet with the big boys this football season? Instead, try your hand with the local book, Superbook Sports, this fall. Superbook Sports is the book next door. Just a dedicated team of the best odds makers in Las Vegas, making sure you get the best prices and parlays anywhere. And now, Superbook will give you a bonus of up to $250 when you sign up and wager on the same day and use the promo code GlennClark23, G-L-E-N-N-C-L-A-R-K-2-3. So bet with the best. And use the promo code GlennClark23 this football season with Superbook Sports. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Whether you're celebrating a special milestone, entertaining clients, or simply enjoying a night out, count on Ruth's Chris to deliver you the finest steaks, the best service, and a level of hospitality that has made Ruth's Chris one of the most revered names in steaks since 1965. Make your reservation now at Ruth's Chris. Whether your focus is luxury and comfort, convenience and technologically advanced connectivity, or sporty performance and aggressive styling, we've got the perfect Highlander for you. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new Highlanders from your local Toyota dealer today. The ultimate fan experience awaits you at Sports and Social Maryland. See how we're raising the sports bar with our massive 100-foot media wall featuring 40 HD TVs and a 47-foot big screen. Bet on your favorite teams and this year's biggest events at the FanDuel Sportsbook while enjoying your your favorite beers and cocktails, plus our delicious takes on bar food classics. Visit Sports and Social at Live Casino in Hotel Maryland. At Arundel Mills, must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Discover your next favorite beer crafted in the heart of Charm City. At Guilford Hall Brewery, we believe beer should be flavorful and easy to enjoy. Our meticulously crafted lagers and ales are derived from centuries-old European brewing traditions, a staple for both the seasoned beer aficionado or a novice hophead. Experience beer styles that dare to showcase the exceptionality of simplicity. Visit our restaurant and brewery at 1611 Guilford Avenue or view our menu and tap map online at guilfordhall.com. Guilford Hall Brewery, European tradition, Baltimore charm. 
The latest edition of PressBox is available now, and on the cover we look at the promise of spring for the Baltimore Orioles, as Todd Karpovich and others shine the light on the team's hopes to take the next step towards championship contention, and what reinforcements could still be coming. Plus, PressBox personalities offer suggestions to David Rubenstein about stewarding the franchise. Also inside, Bo Smolko on how the Ravens' defense could evolve with new coordinator Zach Orr. And we meet lacrosse players from the men's and women's programs across the state. PressBox is available for free at over 500 area locations, including 60 Royal Farm stores. And you can always find the entire edition, as well as the best daily coverage of the O's, Ravens, and Terps at PressBoxOnline.com. Contrary to what some people believe, I actually like this guy when he sleeps. Glenn Clark, talking sports. What uh, exactly are the Pittsburgh Steelers doing? What exactly? This is a, it's such a weird thing to me because, truth be told, the Pittsburgh Steelers with Justin Fields as their quarterback scare me. Like, scare me legitimately. I think they are, at, I, I still got to see how this all comes together for them, receiver, but like their defense is good enough. And with Justin Fields as their quarterback, I think they could, that puts them in the 12 to 13 win category, potentially. Potentially. But they apparently don't want Justin Fields to be their quarterback. I'm the Justin Fields story to me could be the next chapter in John Eisenberg's book. It makes no sense. The skill is all there. It's all there. Why teams are afraid of it, I don't know. Russell Wilson couldn't throw the ball beyond five yards past the line of scrimmage last year. Why in the world would you be committing to Russell Wilson as your starting quarterback over Justin Fields at this point? Now, I, I think there's two possibilities. Won a Super Bowl. Thank you. I think there's two possibilities here. I think the first possibility is they didn't know they were going to get Justin Fields, so they had to make the move for Russell Wilson when they had the chance. It's such a low number. So they told Russell Wilson he was going to be their quarterback, and now it's kind of awkward for them, like, well, yeah, you could have signed anywhere. We're not really paying you anything, but uh, no, no, no. Uh, go ahead and enjoy being our backup. You could have gone to Minnesota, but nah, enjoy being our backup. So I think they're in an awkward spot because of it. I just refuse to believe that they really think that Russell Wilson today is a better option than Justin Fields, and it's more that they're dealing with the awkwardness of it. In a way, it it comes off like they've handled this as well as you can after you have failed with a first-round quarterback. They, they, they seemingly, to the outside, have good options. But in a bizarro world, it's almost like they have to create two different offenses going into the season, one for Russell Wilson, one for Justin Fields. And but I'm jealous of every talk show host in Pittsburgh because, my God, every day between now and the start of the season – just throw out doing any show prep. It's just this. This is all you got to do. Well, it's so rare in the NFL that there's a legitimate quarterback competition. Of the Fields Wilson ometer and yeah, whatever, yeah, whichever way it's going to go. A hundred percent. Um, I, I think a lot of people are saying it the right way. Like Justin Fields will be the starter by the week by week three. I, I think they're insane to wait that long. And again, it comes off very much just like you don't know what to do because it's so awkward that Russell Wilson signed and like you're you're not just going to release him today and say all right go sign somewhere else but man it's so weird it's so weird that you would acquire Justin Fields and be like yeah but the guy that's not nearly as dynamic anymore is definitely going to be our starter next year why <laughs> like what what it's Guess a little, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Why? <laughs> I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, I, yeah, it's gonna be Russ. I think. I don't. Th I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be. I think between now and then, cool. Fields will start week one. <laughs> nah, yeah, like, I, do I have to bet on it? No, I'm not. I, I'm not gonna bet on it. I, I think they know better. I think that ultimately they understand which one of these guys is, is dynamic and a game changer, and which one of them is. A guy at the tail of end of his career. Again, unless there's something I'm missing from those numbers in Denver last year. Unless it was – they looked at everything and all they saw was Sean Payton hates himself. Like knows he still had a deathfully skilled quarterback and just refused for whatever reason to let that quarterback throw downfield passes. 
Maybe. I think so. I, think that, I don't know. I guess. Maybe. I was, it's it's crazy, but like maybe. I was gonna save it for tidbit, but uh, the, over the last three seasons, there are two quarterbacks to have won fewer than twenty games and lost more than twenty five games. And you're saying Fields is one of them? Fields, because they had, they're both Russell they're Wilson both the, and Justin just, Fields. I didn't realize it was that. Russell Wilson wow. is seventeen and twenty seven. Okay. Justin Fields is ten and twenty eight. Well, I'm uh, I'm far more inclined to say that the the story of that with Justin Fields was the circumstances yeah. he was in than I team. am. Like two years ago, there was no reason for the Broncos to have been that bad, other than Russell Wilson was awful two years ago. Now the following year, he was better, but again, it was because they stopped letting him throw the ball down the field. They said all the plays that are intermediate passes, take him out of the offense. We either throw underneath. Or every now and then we let him chuck the ball downfield. Just chuck it. That was it. That was the entirety of the offense for Russell Wilson. So, again, it's possible that they just did that despite the fact that it made no sense. But it seems to me like the guy that's dynamic, the guy that has a skill set, is the guy. Oh, it's brutal, though. I mean, like, brutal. This it. There are so many, like, Lamar Jackson parallels here. Mm-hmm. It's at a lower level, right? But like the number of teams that could have had Lamar Jackson were just like, yeah, we're good. We're not, we don't even need to. Nah. The number of teams that could have had ju- Minnesota has no. Qu- they have Sam Darnold. Maybe they're gonna try to figure out a way to work their way up higher. Maybe, maybe, but they would have to give up more capital in order to do that. When they could have had a proven commodity, but the skill set he runs, and when guys, uh, ah. Sorry, we're not interested. It's effing insane. It's nuts. All right, what's uh, what's going uh, on? We're good. To get oh, we're good. We're good Why didn't you tell me I'm that? Sorry, I should have done that. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to work. Let's head down to Sarasota. Um, this man has been watching uh, uh, baseball and great weather, but mm, stay on the fan. No offense, you kind of missed out last Friday. I'm sorry. Uh, we had uh, Atman stop by the studio and. Um, oh boy, uh, it was wonderful. It was actually worth not being in Florida for. Save me something? Uh, no, no, we did not. Are you kidding me, Stan? You think that we oh, had to? Come on, man! Stan. You could have put a half a corned beef sandwich in the fridge. No, that would it. that would require us not eating all of the delicious <laughs> corned beef, and that wasn't going to be the case. Uh, great Good talk point. as always, Stan. Of course, brought to you by Atman's Harbor Point. Uh, we are so fired up about the new Atman's. Of course, all of the food that you love from the the iconic Atman's Deli is available. And on top of that, they've got something different. I was they waiting. got a bar. There you go. That's my guy. Uh, full service bar, opportunity to hang out, watch the games. Um, never th- heard of a. I never heard of a deli with a bar before. Not common. Not common, and certainly no. not one as great as Atman's Deli. So check out Atman's Harbor Point. All of the corned beef, the the hand rolled bagels, it's all there. The soup. The matzo ball soup, the uh, the crab soup, it's all there at Atman's. And is there the any bar. shot that is there any shot John put something away for me? No, John. In fact, I think might have taken it with him to Singapore on his trip. Oh my God! I I didn't even get all that. I got the ba- they brought they did some bangers and mash to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I got that, and I did get one of the uh, the corned beef egg rolls, but everything else was got. Oh, and I took. They actually brought a play a plate of pickles. Those were mine, Stan. I mean, like I've they, okay. they've got All a full, right. Admins and Harbor Point has a full pickle bar, ladies and gentlemen. That alone sure. is worth the trip. Atmans. Is there any shot that they'd come again on a Friday? I think, knowing how they feel about you, it's possible that we could make that happen. Okay. I think that's This possible. is not a Mike Tarico thing. No, but, hey, no, Stan's no, out of town. No, in fact, we'll bring I, the, the I, would, I would argue they were disappointed that you weren't going to be here. But All right. they wanted to co- they wanted to coordinate it with St. Patrick's Day, and I understood that. They're good they had, people. They are They're wonderful people, people and they are a Baltimore institution, and we are so happy to have them on board. All right, you and I let's let's have at it, right? Let's let's you and I we'll we'll go get right to it today at pressboxonline.com. Yep. Stan's got his Orioles roster prediction up, and the name that is not on his roster is Mr. Holiday. That's correct. So walk me through. I read what you wrote. I'll let you explain it, and then we'll talk it out. Talk it out. Yeah. Uh, first of all, remember this is a team that won 101 games last year granted they don't have Bautista this year they don't have Kyle Bradish to start the year uh, but this is not the Kansas City Royals or the uh, 
you know, uh, um, the uh, New York Mets last year. It's a 101 win team. And they've got a roster crunch right now that is just, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, they've got like five or six guys that really could belong on this team. Jackson Holiday hasn't flopped. Uh, remember, he hit 267 in his brief time at AAA last year. I just look at it right now, and they clearly aren't in the mood to give up, give away Ramon Urias, and I don't think they want to send Jordan Westberg down. So I think that the thing that makes most sense to me is there's no rush to have Jackson Holiday here. Uh, he's got options. Having him play 30 games and hit the ground running uh, and remember, Glenn, this came after yesterday's post-game presser when I asked Brandon Hyde whether Jackson Holiday has done pretty much what he needed to do or or he expected him to do. Mm -hmm. And he was very cryptic. He, he just sort of said, we're just evaluating, we're watching him, we're observing him. Um, I think they're truly torn between the, the, the losing talent for nothing like the Urias and things like that, uh, and and putting Westberg back down again. I think they're torn between Holiday staying up here. It's not a terrible decision if he stays up here, but I don't think they want to be torn with what the what they want to do. I think they want to say this guy's really played his way on the team. Now, having said that, there's five six more games left to play. I think he's got a chance to make the team, but I don't see him barring an injury. I don't see him on the opening day roster. And I don't think it's some type type of uh, disgrace or an outrage. Uh, I think he's 20 years old and I don't think that's absolutely necessary. He's on the team. So I'd certainly think the d disgrace is not the word, right? Um, I think the issue that I would have is this actually goes back to, and I, it, it, you know what I wrote last week. This goes back to once yep. upon a time where there was no chance. You know, three, four years ago, there would have been no chance that Jackson Holiday would have been on the opening day roster, right? Like, we all would have known that coming into the season. Hey, he's not going to be here on day one because from a business <laughs> standpoint, it would be a reckless decision to start someone's clock that may or may, may not be 100% ready. On the flip side, based on the PPI program now, the, specifically when you say, like, if, if you thought he's still a half a year away from being ready, then, like, yeah, you know, like, that, that that wouldn't make any sense at all. But the idea that he might be 30 days away from being ready, could come up in May, win Rookie of the Year, and you'd lose the year of control and fail to get the draft pick that you would have got by putting, like, it come, it, it dances towards a reckless business decision to me the other way now to not put him on the roster unless you're so certain he's not ready and not close to being ready because most everyone seems to think he's a legitimate candidate to win Rookie of the Year, that you could end up hurting yourself significantly in the process by not having him on the roster on opening day if that's really the player he's going to be when he gets here in a month. Yeah, I just I, – I look at one thing. I look at last year he played at four levels of ball. Right. Aberdeen, I mean, he started at Delmarva for like 17 games, as I put in the column. I think he played 50 games at Aberdeen, might have been a few more than that, and then about 25 or 30 at Bowie, and then I think, again, 17 at Norfolk. Last year, he struck out 118 times and walked 100 times. He's down here now. He's hitting two, I think he's hitting 290 right now but he struck out 14 times and walked two times. That doesn't look like his game. Um, he's not drowning. It's not like, again, that he's been awful. Uh, but, I, you know, I, again, we're all very excited about Kyle Stowers. Kyle Stowers is hitting 290 right now. Mm -hmm. Before he went three for three yesterday, and all three of those were home runs, yeah. he was hitting 237 with 11 strikeouts in one walk. So I don't mean to demean what Jackson Holiday is doing. It's just it doesn't look to me like his game is just quite ready yet. Now, again, P 
people could say, well, remember when Nick Markakis, uh, you know, well, Nick Markakis wasn't playing for a team that, you know, when he was struggling that year and they elected to stick with him, he wasn't playing for a team that had won 101 games a year before. I just think the the stakes are a little larger than worrying about one year of control with Jackson Holiday or whether they get some type of compensatory pick. I think they want to thread this needle the right way. And look, Glenn, I went down there a week ago. I told you I wrote mm-hmm. a piece how Urias wasn't going to be on the team. Urias has played like every game every day. Uh, and, you know, maybe they're showcasing right, him. to try to get a trade, um, yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's a possibility. But I don't see how Urias and, and Holiday are going to make the same team, you know, make the team. Uh, and they've got a tough decision. If they do decide, like you suggested, that Holiday makes the team, then the guy that, unless they're able to trade Urias or Mateo in the next couple of days, the guy that goes down is Jordan Westberg because he's got an option left. I guess the question, in looking at your roster, wh- why does Colton Wong need to be on the Major League Club in this scenario? And I get the answer as well. You know, he would have the option. to get. I, I think if he had options, he wouldn't he be on one of those teams at this point? I just don't know right now that there's major league options waiting somewhere for Colton Wong at this point. Yep. Uh, I, I bid on that. I know his average sucks uh, and he's not real productive. Uh, we've remarked down here that he's hitting the ball and the screws quite a bit. Okay. Uh, so I think his, his actual performance is a little bit better than what shows uh, again. I'm not suggesting that Jackson holidays going to come in July or August, you know, or even June. I think giving him 30, 40 games at triple a where he's hitting three thirty, three forty, is a better takeoff point for him than where he's at right now. And again, I preface that or put it in parentheses that I've been wrong before. I just, I mean, I wrote in the column, I thought three Maryland basketball was going to be good this year, Stan. I've been really there wrong. There were three but. players. There were three players I wouldn't have given a rat's chance to make this team. Would have been Keegan Aiken, Kyle Stowers, and Ramon Urias, and all three of them to me have performed well enough to be on this team. Um, and there's just uh, there's only so many places. I, I also my roster is has Ryan Mountcastle on the IL. Um, and that's not something that's been discussed uh, openly. I just sense he's got some type of neck problem. I think I've seen him play one game out of 10 games, Um, and uh, I just think he's going to start the season on the IL. If I'm wrong there, then certainly Wong probably doesn't make the team. Uh, It's up at PressBoxOnline.com. You can see Stan the Fan's roster prediction after the time he has spent down in Sarasota. He's wrapping up down there been brought to you by the new admins in harbor point let's go to stowers for a second is that yep. s- specifically because between he and kerstad if someone's got to be somewhere playing every day it's got to be kerstad playing every day you can live with the fact that stowers isn't playing every day because you just don't think he's ever really going to be a starting outfielder at this point it's... um i don't think they've made that determination that he's not going to look Glenn, we all saw what Kyle Stowers looked like last year. Mm -hmm. This guy does not look remotely like the same player uh, right now. I've seen cases where that's happened in spring training, and Buck used to always say, be careful of the judgments you make in spring or in September, you know, because they're they're aided by different things. The calculus is different. Uh, but Kyle Stowers has not remotely looked like the same player. I do ha- I hasten to add that, again, he struck out 11 times, walked once, but his four of his seven home runs have come against left-handed pitching, which to me sort of says, hey, maybe he's a little more versatile than we thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yesterday he hit two home runs off of a very good right-handed pitcher, Kenta Maeda. Uh, and all told, he's got seven home runs and 13 RBIs uh, right now. So I don't think it's – I don't think they, they've they made a determination that Stowers is is going to be a bench player and Kerstad needs to play every day. 
I think they're trying to put the best team that they can um, on the field on uh, March 28th. And then walk me through why you're so high on Keegan Aiken now. Keegan Aiken, first of all, now I didn't talk to, you know me, I don't talk to players all that much. Uh, so he didn't tell me. The word is he was really, uh, has been dealing with some injuries that really the club never publicized and everything. He just looks like a different person right now. Everything he throws is strikes. Uh, his pace is really crisp. Uh, and I I wasn't at uh, yesterday's manager, Matt pregame manager's meeting. Uh, Luke was, and he told me that uh, Brandon was effusive in his praise for Keegan Aiken. And uh, he's pitched uh, seven, seven and a third innings, struck out 10 or 11 batters, hasn't allowed a run, uh, and only given up, I think, one hit and one walk. So the numbers say it, but I'm down here watching it, and I, I, I'm kind of amazed by it, you know, to be honest with you. All right, so that's 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 the last dispatch for Stan down in Sarasota. You don't unless have... something happens this afternoon. Okay, we and... don't take off. We don't take off until nine o'clock tonight. So there's still time. And obviously, you, Ross, and Luke are still going to be getting together this afternoon, correct? Nope. We have decided to put we we're going to push that till tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow, guys. Due it. to just the logistics with the Wi-Fi Fair. at the place I'm staying, and if something went wrong, Fair. we just know. Tomorrow we're going to be on at like four o'clock tomorrow. Ross uh, Ross won't join us tomorrow, but it'll be Luke and I sort of wrapping up from down here. Okay, so some and final we will thoughts. Be, we won't be. You down won't be there here. any we'll longer. Just be recapping what it is that you <laughs> saw while you were down there. It all makes sense. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> we'll understand it. You know, uh, one of the most interesting things is Cole Irvin. Certainly, we talked about it the other day, Glenn, on one of my calls in. Um, we talked about him and we really said, you know, we really like him. We think he can be a help. He had a terrible yeah. game. I think it was yeah. Friday night. It was just awful. And I think that's why I have Tehran making the team uh, as sort of maybe a piggyback guy or if immediately they decide that. I, and Tehran's pitched well three of his four times. His one poor outing was against the Yankees in Tampa where he was probably facing a little bit better hitting. Well, the one that I was going to wrap with is, did you get any sense as to whether or not there was still a chance there could be? You know, you, you brought up the idea of them trying to trade away Ramon Arias. Any addition before opening day at this point? I'm sure that that Tehran Irvin thing could be in play, you know, where Miami's got tons of rotation problems right now. Is there a possibility that they could package Ramon Urias and Cole Irvin to the Marlins, get back an old friend Tanner Scott or something like that? I, I think something is possible that way, but it doesn't look uh, that that close. By the way, I just wanted, before we leave, I wanted to put in a word on Kobe Mayo continues to impress uh, he is not far off, Glenn, uh, and he's going to be a terrific, terrific Major League Baseball yeah, we were, player. We were, we were talking to Jonathan Mayo, no relation, earlier in the show, and he was like, yeah. in most, it's, it's funny because obviously all the attention's on Jackson Holiday, where from the outside, the, the more prepared of the two would appear to be Kobe Mayo, but there's, yep. there's, you know, he can't play second base, right? Like there's no obvious spot for him for us to be debating whether or not Kobe Mayo should be on the roster on opening day. So we're not really having the conversation, but as far as preparation, age, you know, all those things are concerned in a lot of other places, Kobe Mayo would be banging down the door on to be on the opening there's day no roster. Que- there's no question. If this was, if this were, if he were with the Marlins or Kansas city or the New York Mets, he would yep. be in the major leagues. He is, he is ready for the major leagues. And remember it's no disgrace to say he's further along than Jackson, even though Jackson may be ultimately the better player. Um, they're different, totally different styles of player. But he's two years, two and a half years older than Jackson Holiday. You know, what Jackson Holiday, again, I just want to reiterate, I'm not down on Jackson Holiday at all. I just would like his takeoff to be when he's really playing at 
where he's mastered that last level before the major leagues. That's my take on it, uh, and I'm sticking to it. At Stan the Fan on Twitter is how you follow him, and you can check out that roster projection right now, pressboxonline.com. He's been brought to you by Atman's Deli and Harbor Point. Stan, we will see you back here this Friday. Thank you as always. All right, buddy. Looking, looking forward to it. Thanks, pal. Stan the Fan Charles with us here on GCR from down in Sarasota. Um, look, you know, we'll continue. We don't have to take a break. We can, we can go right to Jeremy. I, and I'll continue the conversation with Jeremy. I, it's not that I don't understand what Stan is saying. I do. I get what he's saying. I, I don't think the difference is significant enough to make up for the potential hindrance to the point of, hey, the team's really good. Well, yes, but somebody has to play second base. And the answer can be, well, it's Westberg and Orius is playing third base, but nobody's going to be inspired by that. No one's going to say, well, that's definitely significantly better than this option. The reason why we're not screaming about Koei Mayo is because we think the options right now are really good. We're, we're good with, you know, or, or better, Ryan Mountcastle, Ryan O'Hearn. Those are good options to us. The options aren't good otherwise. So if that's the case, the benefit of, hey, he might be really good on day one, he might be good enough to win rookie of the year, and you get you know, the benefit of getting that draft pick, and if he wins rookie of the year, you're losing, as I keep saying, you're losing that extra year of control anyway. It's worth it. If if the difference is either Jackson Holiday is going to be on the roster or Colton Wong is going to be on the roster, what are we doing? What is the conversation? I understand what's in a perfect world. He bangs the door down, and I don't know enough to know about the the walk strikeout numbers specifically are interesting. But is that because they said to him, "Hey, we want to see you swing during spring training"? The games don't count. We know you can be patient. We know you can work count. We don't want to see that in the spring. We want to see you get after it. I don't know. And they're not going to come out and say that. They're not going to tell you what their strategy is. Or is it concerning? Is he pressing? And if that's the case, do you not want to put the burden of, on, of a 20-year-old being on the major league roster because you feel like he's pressing? If he's pressing, he's still producing, which seems good. But I get it. You definitely don't want the walk strikeout numbers to be what they've been during the spring. I understand it. It's an argument. And if you had a decent option to play second base instead, or again, if it was Westberg playing second, to play third base instead, I would listen to that. But it's not here. And there's the benefit of you getting, again, arguably the 30, 31st or second pick in the draft if he's as good as everybody thinks he is. I, I just, I can't, I can't make that on scale way out to even. It's always going to come up that one of them weighs significantly more. All right, let's continue on. Let's bring in Jeremy Kahn. We'll actually talk about this. We'll talk sports with Jeremy Kahn. What a hell of a thought. Big Bad Morning Show, 105.7 The Fan, Green Turtle Ambassador, ConcreteLocks.com. I know where he lives. I see where he sleeps. I sleep where he sleeps. Jeremy, good morning. How are you, my friend? Good morning, man. How are you? I'm all right. I had this crazy idea that we could talk sports with you. Um, Stan just laid out his argument for us. He's leaving Sarasota today. And he made a roster projection, and he has Jackson Holiday off the roster. And he says, look, I love Jackson Holiday, but what concerns me is that this spring, for as much as we're all pointing out he's hitting 300, he has 14 strikeouts and two walks. And combining that with the fact that, you know, he played less than half a season above a ball, it doesn't scream to me that he is demanding his way onto the major league roster. And I think those are all relevant arguments. I, I don't think that I can dismiss any of those. I measure that out with, the way the PPI program sets up now that if he were to come up in 30 days and be rookie of the year, you'd lose the extra year of control that you would have gotten from him coming up in 30 days. And you miss out on getting a number 32 draft pick in the process. I, I can't, I just can't see that it's worth it 
versus the risk being, hey, you might have to send him down in a couple of weeks because it's not working out, and that's not the end of the world to me. Where are you with that conversation? Yeah, like, uh, I hear it, and I like Stan, but I'd like him to drink a warm glass and shut the hell up, with all due respect. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe you can get some of that ice, some charm shitty ice, for the ice is nice. Anyway, no, I like, I, I get all that, but, like, it's exciting. I just want to see him here. Like, I, I understand, like, some of this stuff I think can be worked out at the major league level, if you want to talk about, like, walkouts and strikeouts, and or walks and strikeout rates and things like that. I think sometimes that stuff gets brought up. It's almost like... I mean, it's not quite this pointing at graduation rates when things aren't going the way, the way you want to try to get a coach out. But yeah. I, I don't know what else he has to do. I mean, he's raking down there. Um, we, we just had the conversation on our show this morning where I said, I think it's Holiday and Kowser are the two that make the team. And then when we talk about, you know, the likes of Mayo and um, and uh, um, uh, who am I blanking on here? Um, who's that? The cat that just hit three home runs. Sowers. Oh, Sowers. Yeah, 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 sorry. And. Uh, there's one other one. Oh, and Kier said, I think they all probably start at the minor league level. And there's tough decisions to be made, but I'd rather some of these guys be playing every day. Um, and, and again, like there's the, the option of how do you feel about Mateo? Should Mateo be on this team? And, you know, I, I think there's a lot of that thought process, but uh, I definitely want to see Jack to start with the team. Maybe it's me being bullish and being a fan more than being smart about the whole thing. But I really think that this is a generational guy that he'll figure it out when he gets here, if there's any issues whatsoever. And I'm just not worried about like the what could go wrong part. If, if it goes wrong, if it's not working, then you send him down. Life goes – I've said this a million times. I, whoever it was that said it to me first, if, if getting sent down because you're struggling – is what breaks you, then something was always going to break you. Like, you're, yeah. you're not going to go through a career of facing no adversity. Like, that's not the way that the sport works. Like, I mean, would you say they misused Gosman because it wasn't like he's struggling, send him down. He was up and down, up and down, up and down, and you're going, well, what are we doing here? Like, either keep him at one place or the other. Either he's ready for it or he's not. And when you keep sending him down, I don't know that you're telling him anything. Um, cause that was the old way of doing things. Just, oh yeah, we, we got all these options, so we'll just keep moving them up and down as much as we right. want until they change the ways to do it. But again, like with, with, with that, I understand it, but I agree with you. Like people would always say, what's more fragile, a young quarterback or a young baseball player, young pitcher coming up. And I'm going, well, I mean, if he gets knocked around initially and folds, then was he fragile to begin with? Like, th right. is that a guy that I want on my team? Well, I, like, look, this happened with Grayson Rodriguez a year ago. Like this, we just saw this a year ago, Grayson Rodriguez, didn't really even earn his way onto the major league roster. He just defaulted that he had to be on the major league roster because they didn't have enough starting pitchers, despite the fact that he struggled in the spring. It didn't work out. They sent him down, and he was okay. Like it's it's yeah, not like he, it yeah, it's not like he said, "Well, pff, I'll I'll never. I hate them." Or like I don't know what it is that we're afraid of with the ideas. And I, and I think the other trade off, which the Jackson Holiday conversation, and again, I give Stan some credit. It, it does matter that the Orioles are good right now. Like, that part of this matters. 100%, if this mm -hmm. conversation was five years ago, you don't even bat an eye. Like, what are we doing? Of course, put them on the team. But it matters that the Orioles are good. But what is the alternative? If Jackson Holiday isn't your opening day second baseman, then who is? And if the answer is Ramon Arias, I'm good, man. Like, I don't think that your option is definitively better than a guy that maybe isn't 100% ready just yet. Like, I, I imagine thinking that Colton Wong is definitively a better option to be your opening day second baseman than Jackson Holiday is at this point. Would you say going with Wong isn't right? <laughs> or no? Would you say if we traded for Connor Wong, if we had two Wongs? Uh, they, they say two anyway. Wongs. They do say two Wongs does make a, a white, no, I believe. Make, is what, yeah. is but what they say. No, no, it, it, like to your point, like if it were if it were Ramon at third and Westberg at second, or you flip them because you want to keep Westberg at third, right. whatever the whatever it may be, um, no, you're not in a bad situation. You're probably still the best team in the American League East, in my opinion. Um, and it's a nice problem to have when Jackson Holiday's ready. But I, I, honestly, I think he's ready now. I don't know how much more. There are people that keep going, oh, he's got to get some more seasoning at AAA. There are plenty of guys that went from Double A to the majors, single A to the majors, like Pujols did. Um, but, you know, when you start, you brought up, like, Grayson Rodriguez. I mean, if we went back and looked at Roy Halladay, Chris Carpenter, those are two Cy Young winners that had terrible first years and then figured it out. And, boy, did Halladay figure it out to be, you yeah. know, one of the best pitchers of our generation. Correct. But you have other guys, too, that have come up. Lucas Giolito and Dylan Cease are two names where their first and second years were so bad, and then they figured it out, you know. And I think that's what the good pitchers do. 
I agree with all that. I I I do, and I'm I I, I will say like I'm not. I won't lose my mind over it if Jax. I just don't think it makes sense, and that's why I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's the way it's going to go. I think Jackson Holiday is going to be on the team because. Like I, if, oh, sorry, Glenn. If I, they told you that keeping him down for twenty-one days means you get an extra year, I'm, I'm listening to you. Like, right, I, but, I am. I'm but that, that can go away if he wins rookie. <laughs> like he goes and turns. Ex- you do that for exactly. the point of trying to get that year. Then he wins rookie of the year. You lose the year of control and you lose the draft pick that you could have had just by putting him on the team. Like, yeah. I, I, I can't just – once upon a time, we hated the fact that the rules benefited the idea of leaving guys down. We don't want to give any credit to Major League Baseball because we never like giving them a commissioner credit, but the PPI program is a significant moment in baseball history. And it's not all – you know, I'm not trying to say Rob Manfred came up with it. The Players Association was very involved with this and pushing for it to make it happen, but it did happen under Rob Manfred's watch. But it has dictated that all of these teams – a year ago, Gunnar Henderson was on the Orioles' opening day roster. Corbin Carroll was on the Diamondbacks' opening day roster. Julio Rodriguez was on the, the, the Mariners' roster two years ago on opening day. It has dictated that this is now the way that you go about doing your business, that it is best for business – to make sure that those players are on your roster on opening day. And I, I, I think we have to acknowledge that. Like, this is – it was crazy four years ago to think of leaving your best players off the team, but for business reasons, it made sense. We just didn't like talking about it because nobody wanted to. It was – we wanted the best players on the team. Now, for business reasons, it makes the most sense to make sure they're there, even if they're not fully ready yet to make sure you take advantage of the new rules program. Yeah, and I think, uh, look, all that makes sense to me, and, and I'm, I am I kind of feel like I was sitting here thinking about Rob Manfred because I don't want to give him any credit. Right. I don't know if you watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but when uh, when um, you know the captain got let go and they brought in Ken Marino as the next captain, right. and it was like, <laughs> you know, um, and he was so, he's like, I just showed up at the office and signed some papers and they hired me or whatever. You know, like, that's, that's how I always thought about Rob Manfred. And there's been a bunch of good things that have happened it's, underneath him and I, or under his watch, and I don't want to give him credit it's, for it. It's it's dude, I don't like talking about it at all because like it right now he's going down as one of the most impactful commissioners in modern sports oh, history. God. Like it's I can't believe you just said that because I have just been trashing this guy. Dude, I I understand. Like I get it, but look at all of the things that have happened under his watch that have been objectively good for baseball. Like he called the trophy a piece of metal, I, and and he waited, he waited during the pandemic forever to get baseball going after he guaranteed it would start the next week. I understand <laughs> everything you're saying. I need you to know. I understand everything you're saying, and at yeah, the exact man. same time, the games. He said, no, I, but we all thought he hated baseball, but the games moving at a quicker pace was good. Everyone no, watching for me though, Glenn, because I was like, like I said, I. I'm trying to mature, and I want to be able to get past certain things yeah. that people can change and things can't get better. Um, and in here, it's hard for me to say, yeah, Rob Manfred did a couple of good things. Yeah, it's <laughs> so a, I, I can say it. It's very <laughs> difficult for me, bro. It is really tough for me, but I can't ignore it. Like, it I'm going to call Fred and tell him I'm sorry for his brother. <laughs> How is yeah. Fred? I would say, I, like, Fred still lives around here, right? Doesn't he still live in Falls? I, didn't he go to maybe, Florida? I thought he moved oh, maybe to Florida. He did. Maybe he no? did. Maybe he moved to Florida. You might be right about that. If I were him, I would move to Florida <laughs> somewhere. All right. Uh, obviously, a, a huge basketball weekend. Uh, please give me all of your thoughts about Black Dick. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want thoughts of? Um, yeah. Yeah, I uh, do like Anthony Black. I like Grady Dick. I, I didn't get to tell you my story. Uh, so I, I on, my, on Concrete Locks, we have a, a Telegram service on there, too, which is an app you can download where almost like WhatsApp or whatever. So um, the one night I told everybody to play Gary Trent Jr., and he was out. So I immediately I found out Grady Dick was in the starting lineup, and I said, "Take Trent out and slide." And then I realized slide, what I yep, typed. Slide Dick in. I yep. didn't mean it that way. Yep. Yeah. One hundred percent. But there's been a lot of fun with that. Um, you know, like even with he, Bruce Brown is on his team, so you've got Brown there too. Yep. Uh, lots but, of uh, yeah. Lots of opportunities. <laughs> is that really what you want to get into, or do you want to talk about this Thursday and Friday? I don't really care about that. I want to talk more about Black Dick, Jeremy. That's what I'm interested. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my my. My unique interests are black dick. Um, I, I, well, first I, here, I'll give you one. I was telling somebody else. Uh, so I, I went to the Joey Harcum, uh, Ray Roden, Pressing Strings, but, you know, Bond and Bentley. I went to that concert on Saturday night, and afterwards we went to Korean Barbecue. Well, the Korean Barbecue place we went to, the name of it 
It's down off of like North Avenue, but the name of it is J U N G, which is pronounced Young. Yeah. K A K. Young cock. Yep. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the way it's pronounced, but I couldn't even say it on the radio because I was so worried somebody was. And the place is amazing. Well, okay. Way. So how did you ha- did you talk about Black Dick on the show this morning or? <laughs> We did not mention Black Dick once. I can't believe that. I can't believe yeah. that you have gone even a minute without talking about Black Dick, Jeremy. It never even came out of my mouth, believe it or not. I don't believe that at all. You <laughs> always have Black Dick in your mouth. All right, now. <laughs> there is somebody today? There is somebody that doesn't know. There's, that's the, <laughs> the, the beauty of this conversation is mm. someone doesn't know. Can you pull up the video on there, uh, 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 yeah. Griffin? There is someone that is not aware that Anthony Black and Grady Dick, knowing exactly what they were doing, did a jersey swap. Decided yeah. to do a jersey swap. And <laughs> God, they were definitely you surprised that I was on top of Black Dick and that I knew about. Not it, remotely. No? When I think Black okay. Dick, I think Jeremy Kahn. That's the way. That Just it wanted is. to make sure. That's the way that it is. That's the way it should be. That is the way it should be. I associate. You, you, Jeremy, I think bedding, I think uh, facial hair, and I think black dick. That's what I think about nice. when I think about Jeremy Kahn. That's the way that it goes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they, uh, they definitely they knew exactly what they were doing. They, you could see how badly they wanted to laugh. Well, the as, best was is that Grady had the biggest smile on his face. Yep. He's like, I'm the dick part of this. Yeah, correct. <laughs> My last name's Dick. Look at this. I did have somebody break. Apparently, like a couple weeks ago, one of the Hornet, or maybe it was the Pelicans. There was a Pelicans announcer who was struggling. Like, I think we'll just call him Grady the rest of the game. And I, I, and I get it. That is his name. But I also understand where, like, you end up being genuinely. Oh, you got it up there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, don't yeah, know. Black, black. Oh, about to go. Yeah, you're about to see the jersey swap between uh, uh, Anthony Black and uh, Grady Dick, and them lining up. Well, maybe it's not. I don't know if the video works or not. Anyway, the moral of the story is. Um, I, I, I think we all as broadcasters get worried. You said you didn't bring it up at all this week. I think a lot of us get worried about what we might say that ends up being tied to us on social media for a very long time. And, of course, the one that always bites everyone in the ass is the bulging disc injury. Yeah. Right? Like, it's a very common injury in sports, the bulging disc but it seems like more often than not, it is not reported as a bulging disc. And I'm not yeah. sure. I, I, it, it might be that these gentlemen also have bulging dicks. I don't know. It could be both. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, that's the thing. I think with HIPAA violations, you're not even actually allowed to talk about it. So, um, but no, like there, there have been some interesting ones. Cause I think when I want to say, like, anytime I say something that's wrong, I just want to go, and there's a long fly ball from Cassiano. because there's been so many good moments with that and we all for tom brenneman i mean he was such a good announcer oh he was i don't even know what he's doing but Uh, i I think he tried to like create a podcast about people that have been canceled and like talked and i was just like all right bro good luck with you good luck to you all right um yeah i got to look at all the sports we're doing this what is that all about so we didn't we talked black dick oh we did we did talk about (laughs) we did do that didn't we all right. Um, I, there's so many jokes that I want to make here, but I'm going to move on. All right. Um, the uh, g- give me your thoughts. What the bracket? I, I am so checked out on the brackets. I like. By the way, I'm going to need your help. I know you're doing your own bracket contest, but I'm doing a charity one, and and I need help with that. So. Back. Yeah, I know. Gross. What a what a gross thought process. But I am. We're doing a charity bracket contest for Show Your Soft Side, a wonderful animal charity. So. I uh, need you to get in. It's 20 bucks. Winner take half. The rest of it goes to the charity. So uh, I need you to get on in that. But just you're, you look at it. What jumps out at you? What are the games that are most intriguing to you on Thursday and Friday? Um, yeah, I mean, so look, there's, there's a bunch um, when you talk about this. And I was saying to somebody else, this is probably the most that I've known about a lot of these teams in the tournament than I ever have. And I don't know if it's because we started the site and – now I'm just like, I just watch these games nonstop. Um, I mean, I used to watch a lot. Now I watch even more. So um, I'm still in love with Houston, and I, and I feel like people are questioning them. They do make for an interesting, and I hope we get it round two matchup with Nebraska when you see Hoiberg come in with that uh, pro-style offense against the best defensive team I think I've ever seen in college basketball. So, um, and if you haven't watched it, Jamal Shedd's an absolute – I mean, he's just – he's a coach's dream to have a point guard yeah. because he just does everything right. Um, and they're very deep. They're athletic. Uh, UConn's great. 
You know, when you look at that, I think a lot of people have UNC and Arizona meeting up, and that's, of course, uh, the transfer Davis going up against – or transfer Love going up against Davis and how that game could be. And um, so that's going to be a lot of fun to watch if, if those two meet up in the Elite Eight. Uh, I do think there's some other teams out there, like the McNeese State-Gonzaga matchup is pretty interesting. Is hmm. You know, McNeese State's uh, head coach got in a little wave, bit of trouble. Yeah. He winds up there. Yeah, and then he's like, hey, guys, uh, we're going to be in the tournament next year, and here they are. Um, I think, you know, Drake is favored, and I think they go down to Washington State. Um, I, and that's the one thing I always tell people. You, you check where they play. You check the point spread, not just because if you're going to bet them, but it kind of gives you an idea of how close this game should be on a neutral floor. Um, and some of these smaller schools are really good that maybe you haven't seen. So and don't take just what you saw this weekend. Don't look at Yale and go, oh, my God, they barely won against the Brown team that wasn't that good. No, because like they could, they. I'm not telling you they what they got Auburn. I'm not telling you they stay in that or whatever. But like, you know, there there are teams that I saw this week and didn't play the way that I know they're capable of playing. Um, but I do think that's going to be really good, and I think some of the eight nine matchups are really intriguing. All right, so I, I, I don't. I, I hate saying this. I hate saying that Maryland's what determines whether or not I'm. I I don't know how you are because I think gambling changes this. Mm-hmm. Does it impact you at all? Like, are you still as amped going into the NCAA tournament as you are, no matter what, no matter who's yeah, – th- I, I have to acknowledge I am less I, – I will still – look, it's what I'm going to do on Thursday and Friday. I'm going to sit around and watch basketball. I'm not pretending like I'm, I'm suddenly not going to be in the NCAA tournament, but my excitement is impacted. It's, no, it's a different kind of draw for people because if you have a rooting interest, and that's what gambling does is it creates one, uh, on a game-to-game basis, then, or if you bet a futures bet, it, it does create that, and it gives yeah. you that draw. Um, for me in, in basketball, basketball is so different for me with other sports, but then, then I was just thinking about it, so maybe it's not, because if the Orioles aren't in the postseason, I'm still watching every game. If the, you know, if the Ravens aren't in um, the postseason, I'm still watching every game. It's just, it doesn't change for me personally. I'm just trying to think, um, you know, with, with March Madness specifically, it's never going to change if Maryland's in. Like Ed was saying earlier this morning that it does affect him. Um, you know, Rob was talking about it a little bit and said, obviously, it's more interesting. Like, I, I would love to have Maryland there, but if they lose, it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm not watching next week and, and I can no. still root for the team that beat them. You know, and like, it doesn't – because I'm going to bet all that stuff and it's going to change everything. All right, I got three things left on my docket of things I wanted to talk to you about, so let's go through these quickly. Number one, Mm -hmm. uh, who would you rather the Steelers start at quarterback next season, Russell Wilson or Justin Fields? You mean for the Ravens to have success? Russell Wilson. Yep. Um, I think the smarter move is you start Justin Fields and you tell Russell Wilson to get his water. One thousand percent. Number two, did you listen to the new Justin Timberlake album by chance? I have not. I, I got to admit, though, that the uh, the song that came out, I wasn't a big fan it of it. It's not good. It grew me a little bit. Yep. I it say it's not me good. a little bit, it's, but not to the point where it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Because, yes. Go ahead. It's fine is exactly what it is. The song is yeah. fine. It's not bad. And I would tell you that um, I, that's why I want to talk to you about it. I think the album is just fine. Like, I, I think there are two okay. songs that are particularly good. I think the rest of it is just fine and that makes me sad because i love justin timberlake and i just i I do i do too and and this you remember when he had the double album and the first album had all the hits on it the second one had what is like a a duet with michael jackson yeah the second one had something one song on there that was okay yeah 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 that was kind of a, a swing and a miss but like that first album had, I think, probably seven hits on it, including oh. I think it just dominated two summers with Mirror and, um, I mean, just all those songs on the album were good. It was a, it was a great album well, just how to about, listen through. It how about itself. track one on that first one? It might be his greatest. Well, now, what goes around comes around is his greatest song of all time. But Push Your Love Girl, which was, I don't think, ever a single, is, is the closest thing he ever made to a Prince song. Like, it's the second greatest Justin Timberlake song of all time. It's yeah. phenomenal. By the way, they put, he did a Tiny Desk concert. That they put out last Friday as well. Uh, oh, go go watch that. I would say that Next. greater than sign new Justin Timberlake album, which is is sad. Yeah, but I, I also like I'm gonna give that. A, I gotta download it and give it a listen through a couple times because I've done that with, with artists that I really appreciate and like. Yep. Like I do that with every Mumford and Sons album because there was one that I listened to. I was like, oh, I, I don't. I'm not feeling a lot of songs, and then I started to listen to it, and then you know, and inherently a couple of them grow on you, and then they, then all of a sudden you, you you like them a lot, but. uh but with him, I just think he's so talented. Um, it is kind of a disappointment when it's not just – it doesn't have, like, two or three blockbuster hits on it, right? 
yeah, there's that. I just, to me, that I don't even need it to be a smash. I just need it to be a banger. And, like, these songs to me are just, I don't know, they're fine. They're not un. I, I, I want you to listen. I, Technicolor stands out to me. That's a phenomenal song. And um, I think it's called Love and War is the other one that's really good. And then the final thing I have on my list for you today, um, I took, the, we had a crazy St. Patrick's Day in the Clark's house. Oh, God, we got wild yesterday. We played Jenga at the brewery. And then Ooh. we went and watched some of the Towson baseball game. Like, it was a big day. But included in going to the Towson baseball game was that my younger son got a foul ball and was very happy, Ooh. only to then hear an announcement five minutes later that at Towson you're not supposed to keep the foul balls. You're supposed to bring them <laughs> back. That did not happen. So, if Towson, if you're listening and you're mad. Why are you, in, why are you incriminating it's what it him like this? It's what it is. I'm, I'm, incriminating, I'm incriminating myself as well in the process. No, so, give him the damn ball. It's a kid. I, if I well, caught a foul th- ball, everybody would force me to give it to a kid. That kid shouldn't have to give it back. I agree. So this is the deal, right? Like, I'm not really going to apologize, but if they're mad, whatever. We'll deal with it. What I'm saying is, do, do you have a, a theft story in your life that's your favorite? Like, something that you ended up coming away with maybe from an old radio station prize closet or anything along those lines that the statute of limitations has passed and you could talk about here. Do you have a story? No, I, I mean, I don't have anything of uh, stealing anything of substance from somewhere that I took. I'm just trying to think because I'm not saying that that's beneath me either, so don't get it wrong. It's oh, just that I, I, I didn't find anything of value. So. I, yeah. <laughs> I uh, when I was working for CBS Radio in Phoenix, they gave me. They were like, "Hey, you can have whatever you want in the prize closet. If you if you think you need it, you can have it." The old discretionary fund, right? Like, uh-huh. and I was like, "Well, I think I need it." And I mean, like to the point where I was taking DVDs that I would never watch. Like, I'm pretty sure at one point, I think I need a thousand dollars in gas cards. No, no, they, those <laughs> things weren't in the prize closet. What was in the prize <laughs> closet was like season one of the Nick Lachey Jessica Simpson reality show on DVD. And that's better than our Christmas parties where it's like, okay, let's find out who's winning Mike and Molly season five. And I'm like, exactly I haven't right. seen the first four. Do I need to know those? Right. When did he marry the black chick and get skinny? Oh, that's a different show. That's a different show. show. Like, yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. Right. But that was what, <laughs> I mean, what do we, I had yeah. a problem with the prize closet at CBS radio Phoenix. Like they told me I could do it with it, what I wanted. And what I wanted was to take it home to my house and never open anything. Like I have a DVD set. I saw this in my in my attic the other day. I have a DVD set of the Arizona Diamondbacks 2001 World Series, all seven games on DVD that I have never even bothered to get rid of in, <laughs> in 17 years. Like I took it I out of the two. prize closet, and it's just it stayed with me. For Were you an Arizona fan then? For no, or no, no. no. <laughs> it was just something in the prize closet that I was like, this might have some value. I'll take it. <laughs> I, I have two stories. So uh, the, the first one is I, I worked for Redbox for a while as a part-time job Okay. Um, when they were going on. And they wouldn't hire me as a full-time employee, even though they worked me like twice as much as a full-time employee. So, and it was, it was crazy. Like the money was great. And then they stopped sending me money because I was, again, a part-time employee. But what happened with them is they would, uh, they had these moments where they had a big fight with Fox. So they couldn't get any Fox production movies. So we'd have to go to Walmart the day they came out and buy them. And I remember I went and bought 60 copies of the movie Fighting with Channing Tatum. <laughs> and, yeah. like, so, yeah, I went and picked these up. And then I had to put them in the red box cases and drop them off at all the different machines. Yeah. And then they, they were talking about they were letting me go. They were going to let me go, but they owed me like six grand. And I'm like, you guys owe me so much money. So they wouldn't they wouldn't pay me. So I, I basically kept all okay. the movies. And since I had the keys, yep. I went and got all the movies from Redbox and said, I will give you everything back as soon as you send me so, my check or overnight it to me. Oh, yeah, I got my money the next day. Oh, man. Do so, I, I, Jeremy, when I was a senior in high school, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend's cousin opened a NASCAR store in the Hartford Mall and asked me if I would come work there after school, which is a haul for me because I was going to Perry Hall. But, like, he paid me well, and no one ever came into the store. So I could just, like, go there and do my homework or, like, yeah. invite friends to come hang out. And, like, it was it was the greatest job I could ever ask for because I never saw a soul enter into the store or purchase anything. So I shouldn't have been all that surprised when the day after Christmas I went to work and the thing was locked up and there was a note 
from the my my ex girlfriend's cousin that said we're shut down, <laughs> and I was like, ah, I oh. guess I shouldn't be surprised by this. The problem was he owed me like a couple of checks, and I got to like mid January, and I still hadn't received any of it, nor was he returning my calls. So my then my best friend and I concocted the plan that we were going to because I still had the key and everything to get it, and the store was still sitting there with everything inside of it. So I had the exact same thought. I will go I, again. This is the brain of a seventeen-year-old. I will go in. I will take all of the, the the merchandise out of the store, and I will tell him that he can have it back when I get my checks. That was the thought <laughs> process. That I had. My yeah. best friend, like a giant idiot, dressed as a burglar. We were going in at like seven o'clock on a Friday night. We weren't breaking in. We were going in like, "Hey, remember me? I work here. I'm here to clean up all the stuff." My my idiot best friend dressed as a burglar. We go in. We take as much stuff as we can, like stupid NASCAR helmets. Like the the most valuable stuff they had in the store was what two hundred bucks for like these these decal cars that they were selling. <laughs> so we take as much as it as we possibly can. We take it back to my house. I, I send a follow-up like voicemail like, hey, man, got the stuff. As soon as I get the checks, happy to meet you up. Still here, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> now I'm stuck with all this crap that I don't want. <laughs> I can't do anything with it. If it could sell, we probably would have sold it at the NASCAR store in the Hartford Mall. There was no Internet at the time for me to go on and try to sell it on eBay or anything like that. I was 17. So I see him. I bump into him like, at a Ruby Tuesdays or something like that in like June. And he's like, Hey man, I, I owe you money, dude. I'm so sorry. And he just cuts me a check, like goes into his checkbook, says, what do I owe you? I'll give it to you. And, he, and then he hands me, no, it was legitimate. Like he hands me. Oh. A, well, I immediately took it over. I was like, I'm going to go cash it right now. No problem. The cash, everything was good. And so then I call him back and say, Hey, by the way, I got to get you your stuff back. He was like, Oh no, 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 no. I reported all that is stolen. We are good. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, already cleaned all you, time, you so. did me a massive favor in this pro uh, process. He's like, <laughs> That's why I owe you this money. Exactly. See, right. So so the red box thing was interesting because my manager, the guy that took over with management, was this little, this little redneck dude from the, from Jacksonville. And he was super nice, you know, but he was like, he was like 85 pounds. And so he calls me like threatening me. <laughs> and I looked at it, I said, you do realize we've met each other. Right. Like, right. I, will, I will ragdoll your little ass. Right. And then when we, when we had to meet each other to, for me to get the DVDs back, I made him carry all of them out of my trunk. Uh, I told great. him, I went up to him and said, you're taking all this crap out. I'm not carrying anything. Exactly and I said, if you have right. any, anything smart to say today, say it right now. And, and it's just funny, like, the way things work. It's simple business. All you have to do is pay me, you know, but... I don't know. And the same thing in your part, too. I didn't. Nope. I don't feel like I did anything wrong. No, I, I definitely – I don't think it was legal what I did. I definitely think that I could have faced some trouble for <laughs> it. Don't shake down. But I – By the way, I, do you need any copies of Fighting? Yeah. <laughs> I've been needing to get I my hands. Some, I, but I swear to God, my, our friend's father was a, a youth – like a children's minister at a church. And he heard us talking about the story one time. Like, he was like, did you guys really go in there and steal – I'm like – well, yeah, but, like, it's because they owe me money. And I, he listened. He was like, you know what? I understand why you did it. I'm okay with it. And then, like, I swear to God, I convinced myself, well, if this man of the cloth says it's okay, <laughs> then I've got nothing. I've been to, forgiven. I've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, what's uh, what's in your world this week? Yeah, um, so I, I actually – it's kind of weird how everything sets up for me. So we got uh, the big tournament coming up this week. We have our Fan 15 on Thursday where we'll be at Riley's Oyster Bar. Oh, yeah. yeah well, I'll uh, be there, too. So yeah. Yeah, that's going to be cool. And then the next one, that Friday, I'm off. And then I come, I'm off next week too. But I come back just to do opening day because I want to work opening day. Um, so I kind of got like this weird vacation plan thing going on. So you could technically tell everybody I got, you know, just too loose and too lit at the fan anniversary party, right. and then it's say the same work. thing on opening yeah. day because I'll be off the day after both of them. Are you are 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 you actually going anywhere during all this, or are you just hanging out? No, I mean, I was trying to take vacation because, like, of the three of us, I'm the one that leaves the least. I mean, Ed's got a house in Florida. Right. Rob travels with the Orioles. So, like, I don't – like, their vacation to me outside of, like, a family thing, we have – we're going to Red Rocks in May. Um, but, like, other than that, I, I, I kind of plan around everybody else. And I took off a week and then got denied <laughs> because they said I didn't give them enough time. 
And then it came back this week and said, hey, why don't you take one of these two weeks off? And I'm like, I don't want to miss any of March Madness. Like, right. With all due respect to my, my peers, I know more about college basketball than I know as much or more than everybody I work with. So it's like. Well, you I don't think, think that Ed can do a thorough with. breakdown of Gonzaga McNeese, really? Really? Well, he didn't watch. No, he didn't watch much of McNeese. He's more of a Wagner fan. So, <laughs> um, so Wagner. And there's seven players that they have. Yeah, I think he liked, I think he's a black dick guy, if I remember correctly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's a, that's who he likes. He has been to jail. All right. Uh, <laughs> at, J- <laughs> at Jake on Jesus. Sports. I know. I know. You might need to go see that man of the cloth again might need and get to. a couple more Hail Marys, man. <laughs> at Jake on Sports, ConcreteLocks.com, and uh, a Big Bad Morning Show, Green Turtle, the whole thing. Love you, buddy. We'll talk again next Monday. All right. See you guys. See you, pal. It's Jeremy Kahn with us here on GCR. Yeah, not loving the Justin Timberlake album. No? It's fine. It's fine. It's not bad. Just my standards are very high. So I don't need to waste my time. Just I, this, the two songs that I would tell you are really, really good. And then the rest of it, it was just sort of They like are? Technicolor is really good. Technicolor. Technicolor is outstanding. All right, all right. I'll and love it. Uh, what was the other one called? I, I, I don't know enough about your taste. You might, maybe you think it's a wonderful I mean, I like, uh, I mean, I like, I like, you know, pop music, so... Um, like the other song, the Love, and, Love and War, is the other one. Mm, wonderful. I don't know. Wonderful song. The rest of it, meh. Just kind of, again, just, it, it's fine. Just for Justin Timberlake standards, meh. It, he's doing a lot of, like, a lot of auto-tune. And I'm like, you know the reason why y- you're talented? Like, you have gifts. You don't need to do this much auto-tune. You're Justin Timberlake. As it turns out, T Pain didn't need to do that much auto tune, but did. I I don't. One day we're gonna get to the bottom of why everyone thought they had to auto tune themselves. The people like I know why Paris Hilton made an album where she had to auto tune herself. She can't sing. But these people that can sing that just are like, well, let's auto tune anyway. I don't get it. I don't. I'll never understand so that. Too much auto tune. There's a lot of auto tune okay. on this album. There's a lot of mm, over. Pro- there's it's like too much production that takes away from the skill it's like i f- i feel like i need to make stuff that sounds like got it you just want justin timberlake i want justin timberlake i want push your love girl like i want your natural i don't want like this is more this sa- it's like it's produced Did you like suit and tie and i like suit and tie it wasn't okay. my favorite song of that album but i like suit and tie um this feels like i want these to sound like edm songs like i want there to be so much production right, that it sounds right. like an edm I guess song. I have to listen it doesn't do it for me just doesn't. You know what does it for me, though? Bruce Chris. I was gonna Always yes. does it for me. <laughs> Always does it for me. Oh, wh- whether you are, um, you know, planning a, like a big night out, special milestone, you got to entertain some clients, whatever it is, count on Bruce Chris to deliver to you the finest steaks, the best service, and a level of hospitality that has made Bruce Chris. One of the most revered names and stakes since 1965. Make your reservation now at RuthsChris.com. Tidbit Tubi to wrap it up when we come back in. It's Glenn Clark Radio. Fan experience. Yes, it is. Yeah. It really is, though. The ultimate fan experience awaits you at Sports and Social Maryland. See how we're raising the sports bar with our massive 100-foot media wall featuring 40 HD TVs and a 47-foot big screen. Bet on your favorite teams and this year's biggest events at the FanDuel Sportsbook while enjoying your favorite beers and cocktails, plus our delicious takes on bar food classics. Visit Sports and Social at Live Casino in Hotel Maryland. At Arundel Mills, must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hungry? With seven locations throughout Maryland, Maryland, Glory Days Grill is always right around the corner. They have wings, burgers, salads, sandwiches, and drinks to satisfy everyone, as well as tons of televisions and sound delivered right to your phone. Glory Days is the best place to watch football or whatever your favorite sport is. While you're there, be sure to check out Goose Flights Lager, named in honor of legendary Raven Tony Goose Siragusa. $2 of every can is donated to the Goose Flights Foundation. Glory Days Grill, great food, good sports. Why bet with the big boys this football season? Instead, try your hand with the local book, Superbook Sports, this fall. Superbook Sports is the book next door. Just a dedicated team of the best odds makers in Las Vegas, making sure you get the best prices and parlays anywhere. And now, Superbook will give you a bonus of up to $250 when you sign up and wager on the same day and use the promo code GLENNCLARK23, G-L-E-N-N-C-L-A-R-K-2-3. So bet with the best. And use the promo code GlennClark23 
every this football season with Superbook Sports. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Six chicken tenders made from fresh, never-frozen Royal Farms world-famous chicken, a family-sized order of Western fries, honey mustard dipping sauce, and a two-liter bottle of Dr. Pepper. It's Royal Farms' new Tucker's Tenders Meal. It's Justin Tucker's favorite, and at only $19.99, it'll be your favorite meal, too. The new Tucker's Tenders Meal, available only at Royal Farms. Now you can kick back, relax, and eat like a champion. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. The Toyota Tacoma comes in a range of models and trim lines, so you can choose the perfect Tacoma to reflect your unique personality and driving habits. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new Tacomas from your local Toyota dealer today. Gambling can be a fun and entertaining experience, but there are risks involved. If you're planning on betting on the game at the casino or on your phone or computer, know your limit, stay within it. Set a budget and a time to stop. Remember, gambling isn't a financial solution, and it doesn't mix well with alcohol or drugs. Know the risks and have a plan before you begin gambling. For free and confidential services, call 1-800-GAMBLER 24-7 or go to helpmygamblingproblem.org. Jeremy Kahn here. The ultimate sports betting experience in Maryland is at the Green Turtle Bet Park Sportsbook. Join me at either location in Canton or in Towson and place your bets in person and be a part of the action. It's the best in-class sports wagering experience complete with the ultimate TV package, ensuring you can catch every game all day, every day. Their state-of-the-art facilities bring Las Vegas energy right here to Maryland just in time for postseason football. So visit the Green Turtle Bet Park Sportsbook in Canton and Towson and elevate your game day experience and hang out with me to bet, watch, and win at the Turtle. What company has the expertise to make your home healthier by purifying your air and killing all viruses, allergens, and bacteria? A.J. Michaels, Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis, ajmichaels.com. Coming back in here with Glenn and the other guy, uh, uh, Garrett, whatever his name is. You know who they are. All right, back in here on GCR as we wind down for a Monday edition of the program. As you heard Stan say, their show will be tomorrow. So uh, 4 o'clock, Stan and Luke will get together to wrap things up from uh, Sarasota, facebook.com slash pressboxsports. Um, my column is up at pressboxonline.com. Stan's roster projection. As always, you can read the entire print issue of Pressbox at pressboxonline.com. A lot of baseball in this print issue. If you haven't picked it up for free at Near Your Neighborhood Royal Farms, again, head to pressboxonline.com and check it out there. Um, apparently, I... I think I am to understand that anybody that has been in our past bracket contests got a message they could just join the new bracket contest, so the link is just out there. Oh, so really? I might just put the link out there, but this is going to be the deal. If I do that, and I th- I'm leaning towards it because I am seeing people pop up, and I'm like, yeah, they haven't paid. How is this possible? And I'm realizing what the situation is. The situation is that um, if you were in in a past year, you just get an email, like a notification, hey, your league has been renewed, so you can just rejoin it. Um, I'll put the link out, but if you don't pay by th- the time the games tip off, you're getting booted out. This is the reality of it. Like, either you pay by the time the games start, or you're not in. You can't win. Like, we're not doing the bit where people are like, ah, yeah, you know, like, let me see how it goes, and then maybe they just conveniently forget to pay. Uh, like, I'm too old for that nonsense. I'm just too old for it. That's stuff that, like, teenagers do. So I'll put the link out there, and if 100 people sign up, but 50 people pay, then those 50 people will be in, and the other 50, like if, I, I don't know if Brian, because Brian's in charge, he's, I don't know if he can physically remove their entry from the league. I actually need that, because I somehow I accidentally signed up for two. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. All right, I didn't feeling, want, feeling fruity, huh? I mean, I you guess I can make two uh, donations. Yeah. I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't feel, I don't, <laughs> this is like the bracket that I've cared the least about in my life. <laughs> it's going to be the weird one. It. And there's so few like even local connections in this bracket. Obviously, Cam Spencer is a big one uh, up at UConn, but outside of that, uh, well, Oregon got in, so Kwame Evans is in. Yes. Um, Amani Hansberry, Hansberry from Illinois. You know, I didn't even know that Amani Hansberry is not originally from Baltimore. He played at Mount St. Joe, but he's like from. Oh, well, he's from like what PG, PG? County, yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah so like, like yeah, like I like Mount St. Joe, so you know, good for him, but. I'm not really geographically. What's the I guess Howard is the 
geographically the closest. the closest. Former Terp Marcus Dockery on the Howard right. roster, but um, they're playing in the first four. I know. Like I mean they they're, they're not. Not fair. Uh, <sighs> it's 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 really thin. It's really thin. I'm trying to uh, think. Uh, yeah. And so you're when you're talking about Michigan State, I think so in fourth grade, uh, uh-huh. like was the first time we did like a Sweet Sixteen pool uh-huh. where uh, where like everyone gets like a, a team. Um, and I got Michigan State, and that was the year they made the Final Four. Or they made the national championship, um, and so I was always kind of like, yeah, oh, yeah, Michigan State's a fun team. So I've never go been able to yourself. like hate Corey Michigan Lu- State. Corey Lucius ruined the last good Maryland basketball team. I, I'm aware of that. But no, I was like nine. No, I was ten. I don't hate nine. Michigan State, but I there's it no. That, it was that was the following year after. Yeah, there's the there's no run. there's no part of me that is like capable of. Like wanting to root for them on Thursday, I'm not going to do that. We're we're zips, man, and we're, we're let's yeah, go I'm beach. Not, like, That's what we're doing on Thursday. No, we're not no. we're not rooting for Michigan State. We're we're watching the game. Zips and beach. Zips and beach. That's what we're doing on Duquesne, Thursday. Duquesne, I guess, is somewhat mm. close. No, they're in Pittsburgh. Why would we want anybody in Pittsburgh to be happy? Well, it's not like it's the Pittsburgh school. I don't care. I don't want them to be happy. <laughs> like James Madison. Uh, it's like it's like Longwood, saying uh, it'd be like saying that people in, in Baltimore wouldn't be happy when UMBC beat Virginia. You dummy! Like everybody was thrilled, and Duquesne's a bigger school than that. Like if Duquesne beats BYU, the city of Pittsburgh's gonna be very happy. I don't want that. I don't want them to have happiness in their life. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll go with Morehead State. That's well, everybody loves Morehead. Everybody loves that. So <laughs> we'll all be rooting for Morehead. We know that. Moorhead and the Cox. That's what we all. Right. Timberlake in Kansas. There's yeah, Timberlake in yeah. Kansas. But like he's been, you know, I, I, jeez, they, they, they were. Well, it, yeah, just giving up in was, the Big Twelve. There was like a bidding war for Timberlake. It's so wild. Like in hindsight, there was like a bidding war in NIL for Nick Timberlake, and I'm glad it worked out for him. It worked out for him. That part is true. Definitely worked <laughs> out for him. I'm trying to think. I think there's a, a Nathan Johnson who played at UMBC is on is somewhere. I'm not sure where, but he wasn't really much of a player, so it doesn't really do anything for me. It's 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 thin. Um, the kid Bryce Lindsay's on the Texas A&M roster, but he doesn't. He, like he, I think he plays like five minutes a game. So it's it's just very little. There's very little. There's there's Angel Reese and there's Maryland women. That's what there is for the most. And Cam Spencer. Like that's the. That list of the significance locally in this tournament. I mean, KJ Evans is legit. Like, yeah. But the Oregon, it's like by they default. Won Pac-12. They won the final Pac-12 ever. That's right. They will be, well, right. you don't know that because you don't know what Washington State and Oregon State are going to do. They might have a tournament just the two of them next year. <laughs> they just call it the Pac-12 tournament. Here's the Pac-12 championship <laughs> game. Well, Tuesday night. Washington State's good. So, like, you know. Um, if if Oregon was like a real threat, then I then then KJ Evans would be more significant. But they kind of defaulted their way into the tournament, so I don't feel all that significantly about the KJ Evans. But I'm happy for him. Like I'm, uh, it's better to be in the tournament than not be in the tournament. I guess he's got that going for him, which is nice. And we don't have that going for <laughs> us that root for any of the local teams because they're all bad. They're all not well. They weren't good enough. Is that uh, is that it? Yeah, get in the bracket contest. I'll post the link, but you gotta pay. Glenn Clark uh, Radio on Cash App. Glenn Clark 180 on PayPal. Glenn Dash Clark on Venmo. Again, I'm gonna start calling you out by name, John Proctor. I had somebody send me something over the weekend suggesting a side bet. Hang on. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Nathan Johnson's on Sanford, by the way. I don't even know what their nickname is. The Bulldogs. Are they the Bulldogs? Yeah. Maybe I did know that. Uh, how do you feel about a lemon pizza? Mm, I guess it's not as bad as a black pepper. It's a lemon mayonnaise sandwich. It's just a pizza with a bunch of lemons. There's on no it. like sauce or anything. It's just lemon. Ew. It looks like a margarita pizza with a bunch of lemons on it. So there's like white sauce, maybe. Maybe, maybe. <sighs> and it also means I have to make it. Uh, probably, Pro- probably. <laughs> You won't confirm. You it, don't have to do that, by the way. You could, uh, like, I think you volunteer that sometimes. Nobody's forcing you to. I, I think the originally when, the reason. When's it going to get done? What do you mean? When's it going to yeah. get done? I don't know what's going on with the other folks that still owe us. Uh, by the way, we could tell Joe Serpico he's got to make it at, at the, his his family joint. Okay, yeah, we could do that. We could we could uh, cut we could f- solve that problem. We we got people that still owe us bets. 
we we got to work on that. Uh, thank you to Tim for coming in and doing his part. But the old Serpico, what's going on with Serpico exactly, huh? Okay. Yeah, where, where, where is it? I uh, yeah, I gotta just, talk to him. Is he dodging us? Have you not reached out? Uh, no, he's not dodging us. Well, have you not reached out? I mean, I guess we've talked, but yeah, it hasn't. It hasn't. Well, uh, this is we haven't, we haven't gotten close. You are not giving me an answer. Date. You are you are dodging me now. <laughs> when do you want to do it? Whenever. Okay. I want people to pay their bets off. I was hoping to do it in March, <laughs> before baseball season started. Right, but you've right. been okay. not getting. I, I don't know what's going on there. Okay, yeah, I gotta work on it. I gotta oh, work on it. Well, at least that's that's, that's, my, all right. that's my answer. It's not an answer. That's me. That is an answer. It's I not an answer. I gotta work on it's it. The, so you haven't worked on it? Uh, yeah, you gotta keep working on it. Okay, have you? I've talked to Joe. Yeah, since. Then what's what's happened? We're working on it. What does that mean, Griffin? That's not an answer. It means that if we want to get it done before the end of the month, we're gonna try to do that. I give up. I give up. I don't know what's happening here. What's going on, tidbit? Tidbit is brought to you by Goose Flights. I was at Guilford All Brewery yesterday. Ah. Enjoying. I didn't actually because I don't drink. Everyone knows that. I don't want to lie. But you can enjoy a delicious Goose Flights. Um, Goose Flights is an outstanding. I I have tried Goose Flights, even though I don't drink. I have tried Goose Flights because I didn't want to come on and lie to you and say, oh, it's delicious when I didn't know that. It is. It is a delicious beer. Um, On top of that, it goes to benefit the Goose Flights Foundation, the work they're doing to provide non-emergency medical transport to those in need. Available all over town. You can find out where at PressBoxOnline.com slash Goose Flights in partnership with Guilford Hall Brewery. Really a fun day at Guilford Hall. They set up a moon bounce and giant Jenga and and the cornhole boards. Kids were having fun. We were having some delicious food. Mrs. Clark enjoyed the uh, bottomless mimosas yesterday. uh, It's nice to have a Sunday off of work. Haven't had many of those ever. Nice to have a Sunday off of work entirely. Um, So, yeah, enjoyed it at Guilford Hall. Go get goose flights. Uh, All right, so NC State, your NC State Wolfpack. My NC State Wolfpack. Uh, they went on quite a run in the ACC tournament. Five that was wins in five days. That was played at Capital One Arena. Mm-hmm. Five yes, and they've, zero. They've won more games at Capital One Arena than the Wizards. Yes, that is correct. The Wizards yes. are four and twenty six. Amazing. This season, uh, NC State went five and zero last week. Yep. So, so yep. yeah, I guess it's uh, they're they're their new home team for yep. maybe should they, pl- should they be promoted to the NBA? You think? Or? I don't know if it works that way, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Iowa State had a twenty eight point win over Houston. That is the third largest win ever over an AP number one uh, in co- in history of college basketball. So go ahead and tell me the other two, the two larger. Uh, sure, T- it's definitely AP something I know. Team losses. Uh, the number one team was North Carolina. No. Duke. No. Kansas. Close. Getting closer. Kentucky. So close. Kentucky was one of them. The largest deficit, largest loss ever by a number one team in. 1951. Ah, they lost to Texas Western. No. Or who did they lose to? St. John's. St. John's. By 41 in December of 1951. Right, they called in it, Lexington. They, they actually called it the Rick Pitino Bowl. Is that what they called it? Back then they were calling it's it? It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. They knew. <laughs> like, they, they, years from now. Um, the other one was UCLA. Correct. And they got beat by? They got beat by Princeton. Houston. By Houston. How about Houston? Yeah, by Houston. Lost by 32 in uh, actually the, the Final Four. Uh, in 1968. All right. Yes. Uh, also, they were held, Iowa State held Houston to 41 points, which is the fewest in AP number one has been uh, held to since Houston. Uh, <laughs> since 1957. Oh, when it was. When Iowa State actually beat Will Kansas. Chamber- yes. Will Chamberlain in Kansas in 1957. 39 to 37 was the I final score of that, that one. Well, they, you know, they didn't have a shot clock then, and they didn't have a three point line. The ball yeah, there was a lot of holding the ball. Uh, our Akron Zips, uh, Enrique Freeman. Let's go Zips. Enrique Freeman had a great night uh, in the MAC final. He had 24 points, 21 rebounds, and seven blocks. In, Hell in, yeah, he did. And at least the last seven seasons, or sorry, last 15 seasons, he is only the second player to have 20, 20, and seven block shots. You're in not a single really going to try to get me to guess who it was. You better know who it is. Anthony Davis. No. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Oh, St. Louis is Hassan French. Ah, Hassan. In 2019. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, Aaron Donald uh, announced his retirement on Friday. Yep. He will go down as the sixth player in NFL history to win multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards and have a Super Bowl win. 
six player, multiple NFL Defensive Player of the Year awards, and won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you don't really associate, like, defensive players with Super Bowls. So now you got to really do some math on this to figure out. Make sure they won a Super Bowl. Right? Like, that's the difficult part. So you almost have to start with the Super Bowl winners and work backwards. Um, Charles Haley. No, not Charles Haley. Oh, boy, he's missing. Uh, it's well, it's got it. It's obvious. It's th- it's not the Super Bowl. He won like six yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah. It's obviously. Did he not win enough? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Everyone won. That's the problem. Is like, I, I'm trying to do this math. And which way do I go? How about Lawrence Taylor? Lawrence Taylor is on the list. How about Ray Lewis? Ray Lewis is on the list. How about Bruce Smith? Never won a Super Bowl, so not Bruce Smith. Not Bruce Smith. How about Dick Butkus? Not Dick Butkus. Mike Singletary? Mike Singletary is on the list. How about Hauser's Bouts? Derek Brooks? Not Derek Brooks. How about. How about. funny thing like the modern era of football is not really predicated on having great defensive players um yeah so they're not yeah they're not, not modern i was gonna say they're not great i was gonna guess troy palomalu but i don't even know if he won one not troy palomalu um dion no not dion my 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 uh reggie white yes reggie white he is, yeah, number four, so we're looking for one more. Watch that doc. That's 30 for 30 about Reggie, Reggie White. Christopher Nolan Williams? Is that what it's it? called The Minister or something oh. like that. Uh, Palo only won one deep boy. Bum. <laughs> bum ass bum. He, he really is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who won the MVP. When did the Defensive Player of the Year awards start? This is a good question. Uh, this guy played back in. Uh, he definitely played during the seventies. So, 70s. yeah. Uh, mean Joe Green. Mean Joe Green. Mean is Joe the Green. Correct answer. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. I like it. I like it. Very. Well, I don't like him. He was a stealer. Screw him. He's a deep boy in seventy two and seventy four. Well, how about that? Yeah. How about that? Very good. Tidbit was also brought to you today. All Hall of Famers, by the way. So mm. was the list Aaron well, Donald. Think, you think the there's a question about Aaron Donald? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't think. I thought he was on the bubble before, but now he might get in. Yeah, now that he's on that list. There you go. He's good. Uh, don't forget, we have uh, shifted into high school lacrosse season, and you can find all the scores, schedules, news, and uh, play pick 'em at countysports.zone. Brought to you by Toyota. Tubular is brought to you by Superbook. It is a lean night, but as I told you earlier, if you like uh, the underdogs tonight in the NHL, you can combine the Capitals and the Sabres. They got an odds boost available up to plus 380. If you like the dogs, the doggy dogs, they're calling them. Yeah, sure. Bark with the dogs tonight, and you can get it at plus 380. Superbook.com. Download the Superbook app. Use the code GlennClark23 when you sign up. Uh yeah, that's uh that's it's really bad. Man. <laughs> that's it. it, is, the, it cap, is. Capitals, the capitals and Flames at eight thirty on Monumental and NHL Network. ESPN is doing an NBA doubleheader on a Monday because they like realize that the NBA is going to get swallowed up the next couple of weeks. Heat Sixers seven thirty, Knicks Warriors at ten, MLB Net uh, Red Sox Twins at one, Angel Brewers at four. The USA Network for WWE Monday Night Raw at eight. That's it. That's it. That's the list. Jake Gyllenhaal will be on Fallon. Uh, Roadhouse, Roadhouse comes, comes out, out this week Thursday on yeah. Prime Video. Master Chef Junior, I'm told, looks is just uh, somebody I know watched it and said, "Oh no, terrible, darn. terrible, darn!" Like la- and, I mean, and Connor didn't do a good job. And, and, and he said, <laughs> in fairness, like th- that, their their desperation to try to make Connor a star was what ruined any chance it had of being a decent movie. Great. So I'm gonna but waste two hours later this week. I guess. I mean, you might feel differently. This is one guy's opinion, man. Uh, there's a Peacock documentary called Stormy. This is this is about st- it's about uh, uh, dark and stormies. Uh, uh, it's about a drink. That, no, it's a Stormy Daniels yes, documentary. This is a story. That's weird because I've watched a lot of of Stormy Daniels videos, and this one uh, was not not nearly no. as sexy. <laughs> not nearly. It was as not for you. No. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know if this counts. I, 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 I was I, like, why did I take my pants off? <laughs> I, I, it might be able to be grouped into book club. Maybe not, I guess, because it's quite oh, it, the, the Nickelodeon thing? Yes, yeah, we're Quiet definitely doing that. You are doing club. it. Okay. I, well, I mean, the here's the problem. I didn't realize when we assigned our last book club that Reed and I weren't going to be on for the next three five months. weeks. <laughs> so I hope that I don't forget everything from the program by the time we do our next book club. But I did see this, and I wanted to be the next book club. Uh, so the finale, it was like a two-night thing, so it started last night. And it's but yeah, I don't know Max, where it's streaming. I believe. I believe it's oh, on Max. it's on Max? Okay. Yeah, it's, on, right. it's on the uh, Investigation Discovery Channel. But I don't apparently know what that they is. have a partnership with Max, so it should okay. be out on Max, I believe. It's about... Some untoward Sexism, behavior abuse on, the, on yeah. the set, involving a certain specific group of uh, Nickelodeon shows. Yeah, because like uh, Drake and Josh apparently is uh, yeah like Drake Bell is a big part yeah, of this. Drake, yeah, uh, somebody else. Uh, like I saw Kenan Thompson's name apparently. In there. I, I think that's just because the guy produced all that. Oh, okay. I don't think that was like um the Amanda show. What was that girl's name? Her Amanda name was Bonds. Amanda. Oh yeah, Amanda that Bonds was Amanda Bynes. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. correct. Yeah. Um. I look, it, that goes from the edge of like the last era of Disney that I watched, Nick or Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon that I watched, until like I, Drake and Josh was after me, and Drake and Josh was crazy. Amanda was I after this me. Doesn't ruin. I mean, I guess it will ruin it. But yeah, I don't think it's gonna be great. I yeah. don't think you're gonna feel <laughs> good about it afterwards. Um, yeah, yeah, right. And then there's it's what well, it actually it hit home for me last week because there was some infighting between Drake Bell. Apparently, this producer got a lot of people to write like letters to the judge defending him hmm. among them were like part of the cast of boy meets world and so drake bell is like calling people out by name now wow. like it's, it's a rough scene Jeez. rough scene uh, but um yeah i do i it, yeah. it will be on the list it will be on the list for book club for sure if we ever get to do book club again <laughs> i keep looking at the schedule like ah not us i feel like isaiah thomas <laughs> We did not. We felt. I felt like we met the criteria. Young as a, young but we d- did. Little Isaiah Thomas is uh, now a Phoenix Sun. Yeah, that's Phoenix right. Song. IT, IT, IT debut yet or no? He's I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. You're not watching religiously. Well, they, they frustrated me. They lost to the Celtics last week, and it pissed me off. I'm like, ah, they're they're frauds again. They're frauds. So I don't know. I'll I'll see when I can have time in my life again for the Phoenix Suns. I don't know. All right, uh, that'll do it for us. Thanks today to uh, Jeremy Kahn. Thanks also to Jonathan Mayo, to Stan the Fan, and to Jeff Ehrman. We'll get all of it up in the Greatest Hits section of the... Oh, my God, it's so good. ...tab at glennclarkradio.com. Tomorrow... Gonna uh, try to catch up with Matt Wieters tomorrow. Oh, Matt Wieters, yes. who was down serving as an uh, instructor at Oriole yes. Spring Training. And then stuff... Patrick, Patrick Stevens. will go up. Patrick went 68 yes. for 68. We'll talk to him. <laughs> um, and, uh, of course, we'll do uh, County Sports Zone Radio tomorrow and stuff and things. Thanks, everybody, at PressBox, all of our great sponsors and partners, including Live Casino and Hotel, Ruth Chris, Atman's Deli, A.J. Michaels, Guilford Hall Brewery, Royal Farms, Costa Sin, Superbook Sports, Glory Days Grill, your local Toyota dealer, buyatoyota.com. Thanks to Griffin at Griffin underscore Bass. Follow us, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Glenn Clark Radio. Have a great Monday evening. Go nobody. Duke sucks.